It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Richard Campbell's here. I'm in Rhode Island, but we're going to do a great show for you. Coming up, we're going to talk about Outlook and privacy and the terribleness of big tech. Also, what's the difference between Microsoft's Copilot subscription and OpenAI's Chat GPT? And some news about Windows 11, Xbox, and of course, a whiskey of the week. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. This show is brought to you by Cisco Meraki. Without a cloud-managed network, businesses inevitably fall behind. Experience the ease and efficiency of Meraki's single platform to elevate the place where your employees and customers come together. Cisco Meraki maximizes uptime and minimizes loss to digitally transform your organization. Meraki's intuitive interface, increased connectivity, and multi-site management keep your organization operating seamlessly and securely wherever you're team is. Let Cisco Meraki's 24-7 available support help your organization's remote, on-site, and hybrid teams always do their best work. Visit meraki.cisco.com slash twit. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Richard Campbell, episode 864, recorded Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. Word doesn't respect me. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Miro. Miro is one incredible visual place that brings all of your innovative work together, no matter where you're located. We're talking six whole capability bundles from product development workflows to content visualization, all powered by Miro AI. And, you know, that's really great because it means you're instantly generating new ideas or using the AI to summarize complex information. And with Miro, it's great because every bit of that information is right there on your Miro board. Miro connects seamlessly to the platforms you're already using. Jira, Confluence, we use both. Uh, Google, we use Google Docs. It's all there. Uh, we use Zapier, Asana centralized work in a way that makes sense for your team because you don't when you hook up with those integrations you don't have to leave miro to update your projects or statuses in any of these tools you could do it all inside miro miro is so efficient it's so effective that miro users report saving up to 80 hours per year by streamlining conversations cutting down on meetings who doesn't want to do that and seeing all the most up-to-date information in one place. Great for teams in different locations or even different time zones because you have one central source of truth. And when it's time to comment on something, don't have another meeting. Record your thoughts with Miro's board video recording feature. It's called Talk Track. You leave your thoughts on the board. Everybody can see what you think. They can respond the same way. Forget meetings. Get Miro. Try it out for yourself. Get your first three boards for free. I love that, to start working better. Miro, M-I-R-O dot com slash podcast. That's Miro dot com slash podcast. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show we cover the latest news from Microsoft. Joining us all the way from the great white north, it's Mr. Richard Campbell. Of Hello. British Columbia fame. He's been running a snowblower this morning. I mean, this is the kind of snow it might take a branch out and take me out as take the power out as well. So if I suddenly drop out, I ain't coming back. Right? Uh oh, like, all right. <laughs> Good to down. know. Host of Run As Radio and, of course, the Arctic front hit McCungy PA as well. <laughs> and Paul Thorat's uh, refrigerator's been beeping all morning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, Paul. All I'll say is uh, 11 degrees is not a lot of degrees. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's 17 degrees here. I feel balmy and beautiful. I'm yeah, in my actually, mom's house. Oh, no, it's up to 22 yeah, now. So we started at yeah. 11. But. I waved at Denim as I drove by from the, from yeah, the airport. Yeah, it doing yeah. to Looks survive good. exit. Yeah. I, saluted, I saluted Bill Belichick as I went by Gillette Stadium. Sure. Sure. Gone down by Foxborough. All, all the fallen ex-Massachusettsians, uh, the, the, the yeah. ex-mass holes, as we it's call them. The ex-mass holes. I said hello to them all, and now I'm here in Rhode Island. Which has a oh, okay, uh, I, I, right? Style right. right. of its own. I love yeah, yeah. your mother's plantation shutters. I want them so bad. Aren't they great? Yeah, them, but you see what they're those. blocking out, which is snow, snow, yeah. snow. It won't be long. It won't be. Anyway, this is a time to talk about Microsoft, not about weather. Uh, yeah. And uh, I presume Paul Thorat and Richard Campbell 
have some things to say. First of all, we're starting a little late because we covered the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event in the new S24. Yep. Not one word about Microsoft in that event. Hmm. Yeah, a couple of words about Google though, and I think that might we're gonna we'll get on to that. I think that's okay. a, I think that's a thing. That's an interesting. I think topic. there might be something to say there. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, but let's start off as we are want to do with the European yeah. Union. <laughs> well, <laughs> so let me, uh, let me let me let me let me let me preface this show by saying we have two highly controversial topics to discuss this week, and then one liner controversy. And uh, as I do, I'm going to try to keep this as calm and measured as it can be. So. Oh, my. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll see how that goes. Um, so <laughs> I thought you were writing. So I thought you were writing my name in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm writing your name in all caps. <laughs> you wrote no, PAU, I'm, and I'm like, oh, what have I done? PAU, Paul. <laughs> no, <laughs> then you wrote Paul. I'm just, I'm just putting the uh, breaks in the show so you know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like my mother screaming at me from the bottom floor of the house. Paul. 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 Holy. So the first one uh, is the general topic is that because of regulation in the EU, especially uh, big tech companies like Microsoft, Google, Apple, whatever, are, are starting to have to either change their policies or uh, disclose information that they would like to keep secret. And uh, because this is a Microsoft oriented show, we will focus on and start with the, the Microsoft one, if you will, um, which is that. The new Outlook, which is this kind of web app that Microsoft developed over the past couple of years as a replacement for the classic desktop app that ships in, as part of Office, um, is uh, apparently, like a uh, in the words of a an employee of Proton, a surveillance tool for targeted advertising. Wow. Which is a, wish I had come up with that one. Um, but Proton and, makes their money by selling that's right. privacy, encrypted that's email. That's exactly right. Yep. So they're not going to be fans of any big tech. That's company. true, but I have a hard time believing anyone's going to read this and come away with a, a touchy feeling about Microsoft or Outlook. Um, there is a dialogue that pops up when you run out the new Outlook in the EU, or will soon pop up, um, that you actually, you'll see on the web, you'll see on all kinds of things. Microsoft did not generate this. Um, and the number that I'm about to read is dynamic. You'll, it will change as things change. It says, we and 772 third parties process data to, among other things, uh, develop and improve products, personalize ads and content, measure ads and content, derive audience insights, and obtain precise geolocation data, and identify users through device scanning. But wait a minute. Is, it says we, but we, we Microsoft didn't write this, right? No, Microsoft did not write this. This will appear automatically. Um, it will appear for other e apps. EU just, copy. Yeah. Right. Thing is, if you go and look up Microsoft's privacy statement, it it says exactly this. Um, Microsoft years ago, remember Microsoft used to complain about Gmail and Gmail Man and mm -hmm. reading email and all that kind of stuff. Microsoft yeah. used to do the same thing. Um, they stopped doing that several years ago, maybe a dozen years ago. Um, but as did Google, since, we should. Point yes, out oh, right. I'm sorry, that's yes. true. Um, but they also uh, that's not not exactly when, but Windows 10 was the beginning of major. Um, true, uh, well, what do we really want to call it? Tracking, I guess, in Windows. Windows 10, Windows 11 made it worse. They um, call it telemetry as if it's yeah, but, merely checking what you're doing for your yeah. user. So here's, what, here's what's really happening. Um, Microsoft looked at Google, especially, but Meta as well, and said, you know, these guys are making a ton of money on advertising. How do we get into this? <laughs> Why can't we? <laughs> and they've, they've been slowly, over time, doing more and more of this tracking wow. and then selling that data to advertising networks, right? So in 2021, I forget that I don't, I didn't like to it, unfortunately, um, uh, a Microsoft executive uh, revealed that that year they had made uh, $20 billion. I'm sorry, it, that year, sorry, it was $10 billion, And that their short-term plan was to double that to $20 billion, uh, wow. just in advertising. And the way you Holy do that, cow. if you're Microsoft, when you own these platforms, is you put that telemetry data in the product. So, for example, when you use Outlook or Windows 11, no, it's not reading your email. But it is looking at your interests and your favorites, your location, your transactions, how you use Microsoft's products, your search queries, the content you view online. It's it's and then, you know, the, we get into this thing. Bra uh, not brave, uh, the, I mean, some of these uh, statements are so vague. Your interests. You mean you're not reading the emails like right. your, well, your interests could, outside of your emails, right? You're browsing I mean, the web. You're, you know, the right. real point is you are giving them this information and everybody is, you know, on your smartphone 
uh, you're giving them this information. You are. Right. Uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise to people. Yeah, but you know, so, so there, there's a, this is like saying, um, oh, my wife is pregnant. I'm going to have a kid. I know it's going to be really hard. And then you actually have the kid and you realize you had no idea. Oh, you had no idea. You know? <laughs> and, and, I, I, and, and I, logically, I, we, we live in a world where so many guys, so many of my uh, readers will say this, like, I know that Google's tracking me, but I don't care. I love Google Maps. I love Gmail. I love whatever. And it's like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't think you know. <laughs> you know how bad it is. I love those things too. Um, and I rely on them and use them as well. I'm, I'm a, a hypocrite as well, but um, I don't think many, I don't think any of us, uh, myself included, I really have an idea how, of how bad this is. And I think this EU stuff is going to bring this, you know, to the forefront. Yeah. Uh, an interesting has thing like in this light uh, yesterday on mm -hmm. security. Now, Steve spent a long time talking about Google's new proposal yes. Right. For you know, remember they were doing well. It's not a proposal. They're, the they're doing it. They're doing they're, it. They're, they're doing it's built it. into yeah. Chrome. Yep. Uh, they call it the I can't something. API. It's not Manifest Three, but it's a privacy sandbox. Yeah, and and but it's really smart and it's really interesting because they say we're not going to get the data. Your browser, in this case right. Chrome, uh, or any, uh, presumably any Chromium-based browser. I, it's unknown whether Microsoft's going to do this with Edge, but your browser is going to keep track of what you're doing. Yep. And then offer that to the advertisers mm -hmm. for an ad. Your browser so, is in effect going to do an ad auction <laughs> as you visit a website. Who gets the so money? So here's a, uh, the the first little nugget of this is available to, for everyone to see because when you upgrade Chrome or if you install Chrome, you get this dialog that says something about ads, and you they want you to just click OK. But if you click Settings, you can go in in three major buckets, turn off all the personalization stuff, right? Right. Um, and it, this is another argument I have with people around this notion of personalized ads. Like, well, they're going to sell me ads anyway. I might as well see ads that matter to me. Yeah, and that's like, my guys, feeling. I know, but that's a little short-sighted. It's I not mean, just, just ads because we know also data brokers collect this. Yeah, and when data yeah, brokers yeah. get it, all bets are off. You know, governments buy it. We know our government buys it. The right. FBI I mean, you want, I don't. I think the less they know about us, the better, frankly. Yeah, because um, yeah, I don't care if, I don't care if Ford knows what kind of car I drive. But I'm not sure I want right. an entity that has nuclear weapons <laughs> to know all too much. Yeah, about and unfortunately, me. the the dialogue box that would let you select between those choices does not exist. No, <laughs> right? right. So no, and this is you either kind of give the it to them. It's all or nothing, right? You either give yeah. it to them or you don't. But now, I, I look. I this is a, a, a an amazing transition every time that we're in, and so we'll see how these things evolve. But you know, the this new outlook, which you know, <laughs> to date, I would say people have kind of hated because it was missing features and it wasn't as, you know, full featured as the original desktop app, et cetera, et cetera. This conversation has shifted pretty dramatically, right? Um, people is it now your hate sense, it. though, that this is stuff Outlook always did? It's just now that the EU is no, mandating I, this, or is this... No, I don't think it always did this. So It's you, new stuff. In, in the sense that Outlook is uh, a 17 different apps, right, across the web and various platforms, the original Outlook desktop client probably didn't do anything like this. Although, I'll mm -hmm. be interested to see when people in Europe run this thing, if they, if they see this kind of a dialogue for that, too. Yeah. I think what happened over time was that Outlook expanded to become more things, a mobile client, various web clients, et cetera, et cetera. And as Microsoft got more and more into ads, I mean, look, anyone who doesn't pay for uh, Microsoft 365 can go to Outlook.com and see the ads. But what mm -hmm. you don't see is the stuff they're talking about, the behind the scenes stuff. And the question here is, I pay for Microsoft 365 as a consumer. I pay for it as a business. Do I, am I still being tracked on the back end of these services and with yeah. this app? Honestly, probably. Probably. Right? Um, well, probably. And you certainly get why they're pushing to use us to use the web clients so hard. Yes. Right. Like that's right. Because it makes them more money. There's oh, also this, um, uh -huh. there, there, there's a, well, this comes later in the show, but I think this ties into this notion of uh, Microsoft has shifted to this model where they ship products before they're ready. And I think, and we've sort of talked about that in the context of AI, this notion that their, their AI push is so important to them that they need to get these products out in the world. So we get kind of on that boat, so to speak. And, uh, but they're not just doing it with AI products. And the Outlook is actually a great example of this. Um, this thing's out in the world. It's absolutely not complete. Um, it's been out in the world for a while. They're not going to replace the old things until it is, you know, more where they want it to be, obviously. But, um, you know, this thing is in a constant state of churn. And, um, 
I, I think this is all, I think this ad thing is also a priority for them. You know, Richard and I were talking before the show and, and he, you know, he said in this, you know, yeah, sure. I mean, this notion that AI is Sacha's big moment in the sun, you know, or whatever, just like, uh, you know, Tim Cook may see the vision pro as his big, you know, push, but I'm like, I, you know, secretly on the back end, maybe it's possible this advertising stuff was in fact his first kind of company-wide mandate, right? Yeah. Um, because the surveillance stuff in Windows has gotten worse and worse. That the tying of Microsoft, I'm sorry, of Windows and Edge in Windows 11 and the way you can't, you know, obviously there are workarounds, but you choose a browser and it still runs Edge because it hits those backend MSN start, whatever advertising services. Um, it, that This was a mandate. It's not like if the adults just knew what the Windows guys were doing, they would put a stop to it. Like, no, I think <laughs> the adults told the Windows guys to do this, right? This is a company-wide strategy. Yeah, Tim, I think it, you, I think you're right. It's, certainly, it's in the web side. I think well, that, you I, know, moving to the web client was part of that because yeah. there's always a certain amount of telemetry, and it's just easier to add more and add more and add more. Like it's this total slippery slope. There's I, a there's, you, uh, made, I, you made me pull up my pie hole data. You know, one of the yeah, things okay. when I stripped down my infrastructure to move to this house is I'm going to run pie hole from now on, right. and it's 13 percent of all requests are being blocked by pie hole right now. Interesting. And, it, and it, when I go and so look you at should, them, they're all ad telemetry stuff. Like it's just yeah. unbelievable the rate, you know, and it, there's only yeah. two people that live in this house. Yeah. So is, uh, right. If you, uh, tried the new outlook on your network, I wonder if that would change. It would yeah. be worse. Right. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, uh, it was Steven Sanoski who told me, I mean, a million years ago now, over 10 years ago, obviously that, uh, the vast majority of usage in Windows was happening through web browsers, and the vast majority of that use is even then was happening through Chrome. You know, right. and um, but I also think that's what they were able to measure. Like yeah. it's kind of a self fulfilling yeah. prophecy. If the only thing you measure, then it, then of course it's the vast majority. But you know, it, it, it kind of puts a dark side to this thing. I've always uh, th sort of thought as as the web app kind of platform matured that this was the thing that would could replace desktop apps, and of course yeah. Teams. Uh, loop outlook you know it's happening right yeah but well um, they're electrons so they're coding in a in a you know javascript platform but then they're compiling you know running it natively right uh, okay that doesn't but that means that all of those ad network and telemetry Can libraries run, ready to run just fine no problem yeah. including I mean, the windows app. has in many ways become a host for the web through like mm -hmm. WebView 2 or whatever, yep. uh, which is in it, itself in Microsoft's world, a, a host for telemetry, uh, yeah. targeted advertising and tracking. Just make sure that, yeah, so it, you, you just, you've now nativized the telemetry engines, right? Yeah. You don't have to which write new really ones. really scary, right? I mean, so. Well, they're uh, pernicious for sure, right? Like, Yeah, I had a, um, it's funny when, when confronted by this number, right? Micro, uh, Microsoft Outlook, the new version is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Microsoft and 772 partners, right? Yeah, it's such it's a good the, number. It's yeah, it's funny the reactions that people have to this because I had one guy who said, "Well, yeah, but what about what about what you know? I wonder what the number looks like for Google and Meta, you know? Yeah, like yeah, Legit. I wonder about that too. Yeah, what what do the number look like for Windows 11 or Teams or Edge or you know like I mean, I, I, there's no version of this where Microsoft comes out looking good, right? That's kind of the problem. Yeah, um, and then of course we get to the uh, you know where my brain goes immediately is like, okay, well, what can you do about this? Um, I'm going to talk about that in the back of the book a little bit because mm -hmm. it's an unsolved problem for right now. Although you just mentioned res, uh, the pie hole, that's absolutely one approach, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, pie hole takes tweaking and tuning. Like it's, you can't yep. deploy a pie sense. hole at, at, at your parents' place yep. and not expect to get calls regularly. That's right. That's and right. So even, gonna, yeah, well, even as technical as she who must be obeyed is, you know, next door, she's still like, why is this page broken? That's and right. da, 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 okay, I whitelisted it for you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're right. So it's a, you're kind of whack a mole uh, unfortunately. Yeah. But at least I'm working the other direction now where I've blocked a lot of stuff and I white hole exceptions. You know, yeah. they, they, yeah. the junk website, junk website that's nothing but ads that's just generally blocked is like, oh, but you like that junk website. Okay. Well, fine, <laughs> stuff I'll, does well, break <laughs> though. I, I use uh, Next DNS on our home. I do. I so used we're going to, I'm going to, but, uh, but I had to turn it off because Lisa said, well, I can't. You know, right. we've got yeah, sponsors and gonna, they, their gonna, site won't work. And it's right. like, I had yep. to turn it off. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get, we're going to get to this. So this is, this is a thing. So th this is a, this, we're not going to leave this episode solving this problem. That's, that's, yeah. that's the issue. No, and it, believe it, we, like, we're all living in a pretty hypocritical world right now where we're, a chunk of our incomes are coming from ad revenue. 
Okay, except for one thing. So mm. uh, someone brought that up to me, right? So my site apparently triggers this 772 dialogue, except my number is much smaller. It's 100 and something, right? right? Here's the thing. I am not the source of those ads. No. I am not tracking you. <laughs> so, nope. you know, in other words, I am a tiny business that's buying into an ad network. And that's one of the ways I make money. And it's a really crappy way. But unfortunately, with this type of business, it's all you can do. And um, there are bigger companies than mine that are benefiting from this and doing those horrible things. It's not me. Yeah. In Microsoft's case, it is Microsoft. Microsoft yeah. is not an innocent party buying into. No. Oh, we thought this uh, this uh, business was you know legitimate. Well, and and, and, and this is also like we're the ones who want Microsoft to be the kinder, gentler tech giant, right? Like that's right. We, we that's would right. like this to be true, and we're just being reminded it's not. They are yep. still and, the, right. now the highest valued corporation on the planet. This is right. It's the the yin and the yang thing with uh, in this case with Microsoft, which is that for the past ten years ish. They have had, they have seemed to had what I would have called the moral authority, if you will, over other big tech companies. Yeah. The moral only, only because they got spanked first. Well, not okay, but, for, but I mean, they did. But the reality was, I, I, you, you shouldn't trust any of these companies, maybe, but if you have to trust one, Microsoft would probably be the most trustworthy. I've definitely right. made this argument. Sure. And Me too. now that, right. But now you look at this and it's like, you know what? They're all terrible. And mm -hmm. as much as I sort of celebrate Microsoft re exerting itself on the world stage, like you um, could, you had a chance to yeah. go the other way, right? Right. Because you weren't a play, you know, it was Fang. There was no M, right? Now no, that you're I gonna, know. You got left out of it. Yeah, you, you got were, left you, out of it. Now was, you got to step it, back yes. in and say, we're different. And you know, yep. you're not. No, you're yep. not. Yep. Apparently $20 yep. billion dollars is the price of Seoul. There is a price. Yeah, everyone has a price. Yeah. yeah. And we learned Microsoft's is in the you now double digit billions, apparently. So. Yeah. And, but it's still not the majority, you know. With the other 40, 50, 60 billion last quarter wasn't enough. I know. I know. Hey, they just became the biggest company in the world briefly. Um, yeah. So you can't, I, I, I know. I know. It's awful. I, it's just awful. I, I, and, and it's not I, like you wouldn't have made some of that money being right. the good guy. Look, I, I, I have all these examples of things that happened this week. I don't, I don't actually think we need to discuss them in any detail. There's mm -hmm. the Epic v. Apple stuff. Google unlinking its services in the EU, Apple removing pulse ox from watch, which is really just an antitrust issue. Yeah. Um, Google coming clean on incognito mode, actually tracking you. Um, Google Cloud allowing EU customers to keep data locally, something they've been working on for years. And okay. and by the, you know, this all comes from the EU instituting these gatekeeper rules, right? right? And right. acknowledging and then and they're not even legislating at this point. They're just showing you what they found so far. I know. Like it's the it's beginning. astonishing. It's the, the first release. But here's the thing, like, here's the problem. So one of the issues I've run into over the past few years, uh, no, the past few months, I would say, actually, is I've always, you know, look, I'm kind of a Microsoft guy, but Microsoft first, maybe whatever you want to call it. But I, I, I have stopped using Microsoft products and services when there's something better. I, you know, mm -hmm. I went to the iPhone when it came out or whatever, you know, yep. like I, I'm, I'm pragmatic as well. Right. Uh, we stopped using uh, OneNote a couple of years ago because we, uh, Mary it's Jo and I, at the time, it could yeah. not collaborate in real time. It was horrible. And, uh, and of course they had gone to the, there was a brief moment there where they went to that windows 10 version of the app, which was wonderful, lightweight, uh, yep. well, relatively you know, less UI minimalist. And then they were like, yeah, we're not doing this. And they went <laughs> back to the desktop client. I'm like, no, I can't do this anymore. So I've done those kind of things, but in recent months I experimented with and then stopped using uh, OneDrive because of all the crap going on there. Um, I finally pushed uh, after I've done this a few times, honestly, we'll see if this one sticks, but I've stopped using Microsoft word because it just doesn't respect the configuration changes I made. In other words, it's not paying attention to me. It's right. just berating me for not doing things the way Microsoft wants because they want that data in their cloud so they can do their AI stuff, right? And we'll get, we're, AI is going to be the second big one. But, you know, the problem is because those things have happened back to back, right? Uh, over October, December, whatever time frame, you know, a lot of people who read my stuff are like, um, What's going on here, buddy? Are you going <laughs> to leave the Microsoft the world here? You know, are you going to leave Windows? Right. That's the, that's the obvious one, right? And yeah. I got to tell you, I I use uh, the Mac and the Chrome and Chrome OS fairly regularly, and I very much prefer Windows. I really do. For all the crap going on there, I just I do. Well, let me ask you this, Paul. Yeah. You think Apple might be better for privacy? No. So here's the thing. Um, uh, app. So the, one of the things that bo bothers me about both Microsoft and Apple is how heavily they market 
the privacy, privacy protection. Yeah, yeah. Features. the hypocrisy is what's getting. The to hypocrisy you. is incredible. If you, um, uh, when you sign into Windows 11 for the first time, there's a whole page about it. Oh, look at all these things you can do. This we, is we why were... people aren't angry with Oracle. It's like we're evil. Get over yeah, it. Yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. they, <laughs> yeah you know, <laughs> Wait, we never. Scott, Mc, yeah, but Scott there McNeely is an important right. thing that I think most people don't make the distinction between first party information and third party information. Mm. And so yeah. these companies, Apple's a good example of this. Act as if we protect your privacy because we because have a we lot love of tools you and we're humanists. For, and no, no, we, we have a lot of tools like uh, Apple's uh, application tracking prevention that right. turns off third party data collection. Third party, and that's the the, key. the thing is right. people don't understand that Apple still collects the data. Here's well, the, Microsoft so this, still um, collects the data, and that's right. So you're not um, really you hiding. Can, you, you can fiddle with Microsoft privacy settings all day. You're not turning mm. this stuff off. I'm sorry. And that, yeah. by the way, well, what, I mean, even if you did, like, do you? How would you know? You can't see what I they're collecting in the first yeah, place. How would know. you know they're not? You'll never know. Okay, but I so, feel like Apple. You really think it's just lip service that Apple doesn't? It, well, I can prove it. <laughs> so, oh, good. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm more invested in the Microsoft side, but Apple's secret. I, I, I don't remember who said this. It might have been Cory Doctor, but someone pointed out. Explain to me exactly how two of the biggest companies on earth have a lucrative deal such that one of them is getting paid $20 billion a year and they uh, never reveal this to anybody. Right. Because here's the thing. If you don't change the default search engine, you are being tracked on an iPhone. Right. And yeah, right. Google. Apple- But you uh, can change it. I mean- You can, but they don't see- the, No one, there's no dialogue popping up saying, hey, by the way, you're getting tracked. You get. You should turn that off because my Apple's being paid for that. Right. That That's how I know. Right. In, in Microsoft's case, I have more of a- I just I think though right? that you're there is so much telemetry in Windows that is not in Macintosh. Yes. Right. Right. That's right. Um, yep. Look, I, I mean, uh, I, I mean, maybe it's a, a matter of degree, but uh, and and I certainly don't uh, think Apple's pure, but I don't. No, no. Look, uh, let, me, let me get. Let me, I'll just give you a single example because it's it is Edge, it's Windows, it's Outlook, it's everything. But let's just stick to Edge. You know, when you first run Edge, there's a couple of screens. It makes it sound like they're doing a great thing for you. In fact, all you're doing is opting into more tracking. But if you go into Edge Privacy Search and Services, and this was the big thing they pushed when they moved to the Chromium-based version of Edge, tracking protection. We value your privacy. We will always protect and respect your privacy while giving you the transparent control you deserve. There's nothing you can do here to prevent tracking. And the reason I know this is because when this product first came out, I put it on the strictest form of tracking. And I, I, I browsed for, I searched for a, a pair of New Balance sneakers I needed to replace. I got them. And then I had um, New Balance ads for the next two months. And so right. I, I actually contacted Microsoft and I said, okay, so you guys said that this browser was going to prevent this. Why is it not preventing this? And I got some rigmarole, blah, blah, blah. We can't, you know, we don't, can't prevent all tracking. And blah, blah. But the thing is, they, they were actually causing it. See, the, the thing you come to realize over time is that when Microsoft says we're going to move remove all of the Google stuff from Chrome uh, from, you know, from Chrome and call it edge. That sounds wonderful. But the, the corollary there, or the, uh, the other side of that is yeah. we're also going to put our own stuff in there and replace yeah. it. We're doing, we're doing exactly the same. Don't worry. Except we're not as good at it. Yeah. And we, that's right. <laughs> they they are definitely not as good at it. So this was a running gag with a system and buddy of mine. Whenever we'd go for lunch, I would mention a product we'd never talked about before in his car only just, just because we were sure could. that Facebook had the microphone mm -hmm. turned on. Like we're just sure. sure. And before lunch was over, those okay. were the ads in his feed. Yeah. We've all, you know, everyone experiences this creepy, oh yeah. creepy no, thing. And, so, and so the trick was to pick something like we've never talked about radial arm saws before. So that's what I'm going nice. to mention in the car, right? <laughs> Just okay. to make it yeah. abundantly clear. Yeah. No, I listen. I, yeah, we all, we all experience this, right? So it's not a, it's not pretend it's, it's, it's real. So mm. the thing is, you know, whether it's Microsoft Word or, 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 or one drive, or Microsoft Edge, or just Windows 11 respecting my browser choice, right? Like, you know, I, I, it's a pretty low bar when I say something like, what I really want from software that I use as services is for them to respect my my choices, right? <laughs> like, like, duh. And, um, you know, when those things don't happen, uh, you know, you try to move on, right? The question is, what steps can we take? This is like, you know, four or five years ago, there was a big movement uh, in certain circles, like, well, I want to remove Google from my life, you know? And then you come back and look at these guys now. And they're like, yeah, I couldn't really do it. So I, you, you I, can't uh, you do know, it. Music, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Do it. You know, you can't. It's so Cashmere Yola. Wasn't it Cashmere Yola who de Googled her life, but it didn't work? Oh, yeah, work. sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, it's like that uh, Kevin uh, Roos was like, Kevin yeah, I can't believe it. I'm saying this. I'm switching yeah. to Bing. I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Go ahead. 
We'll talk um, to you in a minute. And he, yeah. and he didn't. Um, yeah. But I, so this is, we're and in a tough spot. By we're the way, spot. as you point out, it wouldn't make any difference if you did. Yeah. So That's you, right. you're, letting, you're trading so, one spy for another. Yeah. Uh, Richard, so Richard in the, uh, the Discord is, uh, it quotes, uh, quotes is written shareholder value, right? As a mm -hmm. kind of a, a phrase we might use to. That's our Harvard uh, Business School catch all for. Yeah, corporate but this behavior. is the insurtification thing too, right? In other words, mm -hmm. when a company uh, starts making decisions in its products that make life worse for you on purpose, yeah. knowing knowingly uh, violating what you've right. asked for and requested and, and demanded, frankly, especially if you're paying for it. Um, that's what this is, right? This is yeah. Where they, is they, the shareholder value in violating customer expectations? It's apparently at about the twenty dollar, twenty billion dollar mark for Microsoft. Mm. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> right? no, because remember, you know, back in the day, uh, we used to talk about like, what does it take? You know, my, the Microsoft of 10, 15 years ago. What does it take if you're inside Microsoft and you want to spin up a new business and have it succeed? Got to be that a billion dollar had, business. It had to be a billion dollar business. That yep. was the thing. That's what Bomber so demanded. Think, yep. But that was a long time ago, right? I'm thinking the number's higher now. Oh yeah, and uh, and I and look, Microsoft very famously uh, has had a, a severe case of the Apple envy thing for 20 years now, 20 plus years. I yeah, I don't Nobody know why does. they have such a good business. They sell more than one thing. I, I uh, Microsoft is not a charity. They could make more money. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I right. mean, uh, now. I, Apple, I whatever anyone thinks of Apple, they are a unique company and they do things that other companies just can't get away with. They can't, they don't have that same loyalty from the customers, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a special something there that no one can understand. But uh, Google and Meta, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they also, less famously, have had a, a case of uh, jealousy toward those companies, right? And honestly, that is more achievable and obviously because they've achieved it, right? Uh, I don't know that their advertising business is worth twenty billion dollars a year now, but it's definitely above ten, right? And it's in there. And I think this is the baseline. Like, how how much do we have to make for us to be awful to the people who are paying us to be customers? And the answer is ten billion dollars or more a year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right? Oh, now, Corey, not that Apple Corey wins. Go ahead, bud. Corey Doctor is going to be on Twitter on Sunday. I'll uh, okay. I love it. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to have a lot to say. A who's the shirty? This is just <laughs> the, the, the beautiful thing about what he's done with this insurtification stuff is that now he can just sit back and say, I told you so. Because everything yeah. we come up with now is just another example of it. It's yeah. all but the it, same. It also speaks to a cycle, right? That you eventually yeah. damage a product sufficiently that customers move away from it and don't trust more. Like you overcome yeah. that inertia. Thank you. And I, yes, I'm going to, that is. You get to make a new thing and swing up again and then go right. back down again. Well, and that's Corey's that's a, point. The, mm -hmm. the, the end game uh, if from the point of view of, of us users is interoperability. We have to be yes. able to move right. when right. it becomes so bad that, you know, we're obviously exploiting us. Then we yep. have to be able to move take because it, and, be, and because it's inevitable. Like this is, yeah, I, I think that this is yeah. you know, this is mobility, right? So um, a lot of the locks that would keep you into an ecosystem have fallen down. Simple things like being able to move your phone number to a new carrier in the United yep. States, which was, by the way, was almost impossible for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, well, and, you, and you, there, by the way, there you can thank government regulation for that. Yes, phone companies right, yeah. would never have done that. The, the people, I, I have people who are like overregulation, overregulation. It's like no, 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 no. We, we, we listen. Uh, history shows we need regulation. We, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. not. This is not overregulation. Yeah, once upon a time, the phone company owned your number. Yes. And then it was government regulation says, Which no, is, that no, number is yours. You have yeah. a name, you have a social security number and you have a phone number. That is collectively, arguably your identity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I, and I know that shifts over time or whatever, but I have the same phone number I've had since the iPhone first came out. Cause back then I did have to change my phone number and that was actually fairly traumatic. Um, yeah. You know, and now I uh, now I live in a state. My my area code uh, in of the phone number I still have is six one seven, which is the original Boston or Massachusetts area code. The area code in uh, this part of Pennsylvania is the original one for this whole state, which is six one zero. So when I I get asked my phone number in a store, or whatever I six I say six one seven, and they go six one. Did you say something? I mean, every <laughs> single time there there isn't a human being in this state. No, that could can get past that not being a zero, like yeah. you, you know, because they hear it, they just they know I'm going to say it, and then I don't. And they're like, wait, what? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Anyhow, so actually, yes. I'm just reading the uh, Wikipedia article on number portability. It yeah. was created by Siemens. Mm. Really? Yeah. Introduced because the, e, the EU demanded it. It, it was oh. introduced as a tool to promote competition in heavily monopolized wireline telecommunications yeah, industry. There you go. 
Uh, so it really did come from private industry, but it was well, eventually but, mandated by the FCC right. in 1996. Yeah, in this, in this country, it was absolutely regulated. It's actually, there are only three countries where there's true number portability, the oh, U.S., geez. Canada, and South Africa. Everywhere mm -hmm. else, there's still kind of this gray area, right? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, it's, it's, it is interesting. You know, the, I guess email, email address would be another one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you should be able to and 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 that's been from the d earliest days of the domain name system that you could I, look, move. I, the, there's there's technology look for all the insurification stuff I got to tell you and you'll agree everyone will agree with this. I mean, um the ease at which you can uh move between phones but with an e sim now is unbelievable. Yeah. It's instantaneous basically, right? You do it yeah. by yourself. You used to have to go and have like like a guy would come yeah. out in like a Intel yeah. lab suit and be like, I'm and gonna they, take your phone into the back and room. They and they charge yeah. you for the sim, by the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy, right? So that that's awesome. Um the other awesome thing that's happening that happens to be in that space is uh uh, data access internationally, especially for people here in the United States where we don't have that cross border EU thing, right? So I the first the first year that the iPhone came out, I took that thing to uh, Paris and oh. had it in, they didn't have do not disturb oh. mode. I had to turn off the, the radio because I was yeah. so afraid from those stories you had of people who came back with this much paper right. from a bill. In the early days. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. And uh, that was the summer that Paris was rolling out for the first time public Wi-Fi in their parks. And I would go out there like a little beggar and, you know, kind of connect <laughs> on my tiny iPhone. And uh, I was scared to death. And now I just, I just travel. I don't even think about it. Don't you know, it's that. wonderful. It's not a thing. Yeah. Wonderful. So well, they'll screw distance, that up eventually. I remember, I remember getting on a long distance phone call and shouting, "Hey, uh, this this is long distance. I can only talk for a minute." Yeah, it's it like, like so like expensive. You were talking to like a metal yeah. tube or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so know? expensive. I know. Crazy. You don't think about that anymore. Nope, so, not at all. There are some good things in the world. There are some I, good things. Right? Some we of should, I guess we should pause forces. to rethink of that. I guess. Uh, some of but in our in the Microsoft forces. world, uh, I I no. Look, there are good things. I guess you know. But uh, yeah, that's why it's, that's why you're upset. If there's nothing good here, we would have walked away. Yeah, there's okay. an awful lot of good here. It's just been very shirty lately. But you know what? Though, uh, by the way, I agree with you, but I also worry that what we're really talking about is inertia, <laughs> right? Mm, true. Is there a lot of good here, or or was there a lot of good here? And we're just kind of used to this, you know. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I mean, this is a. I'm not trying to walk away from the Microsoft ecosystem. I don't mean it that way, but th this is getting a little alarming. You know, yeah. the behavioral but stuff. We're, our instinct still is it's worse over there, right? Like that's it, our instinct. Yeah. It may be incorrect. Right, right. That's probably just tribalism. And that's probably yeah. not yeah. real. Which is, you know, the type of thing I would kind of argue against, you know, if it wasn't me, but now I'm going to support it because, you know, <laughs> I never. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I want to be clear headed about it. Right. I, I, and I want, I want people to be educated on this stuff. And by people, I mean me. I mean, you know, I want, I well, want no, to be Well, no, I mean, we, look, uh, even on a show like this, which is about a specific company, or yeah. Mac Break Weekly, which is about a specific company, our real constituency is not the company, it's the end users. That's it's, exactly right. It, 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 the constituency exactly for Windows right. Weekly is the people who use that's, and Microsoft that's, products, yes. not Microsoft. When people come to me and they say, man, you're really negative. And I'm like, am I negative or are they just doing bad things and I'm calling it they, uh, them on it? Like, in other words... If they were doing something that deserved me cheerleading them in some way, I would do that. But I'm not just yeah. going to be a cheerleader. Like no. I, you know, I, I that is, to, I mean, my God, we have enough of those. Well, <laughs> that's know? that's what I, I often get emails from people saying, "Why are you so hard on Apple? Uh, don't you like Apple?" I think Apple sends me those emails actually. But Apple uh, deserves more scrutiny. I think <laughs> Apple needs more people to be that yeah. aware. And there's plenty of, of fanboy like. podcasts and blogs you can you yep. can subscribe yeah. to and if that's yeah. if you just want to have your tribalism mm -hmm. reaffirmed and that's i understand right. that th why people want that that's mostly how humans are th but this is I, not the place for that and i i guess we've we're kind of apostate for something i would like people. people to be i would like people to take that apple marketing slogan make it grammatically correct and actually think <laughs> think think, think clearly think differently <laughs> think don't just accept marketing as some kind of a right. truth you know right, right. um Look, I, Apple's a good not, a good example of the same thing you're talking about. It's not er, not merely inertia, but the ecosystem there does some, have value. That's right. And there, so, by being having an Apple yes. Watch and an Apple phone and an Apple Mac and an yep. Apple, I, 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 you get some value out of that. I, so that's I'm, legit. Okay. So, just on that topic briefly, I'll I'll just say one of the things that I don't know if we talked about this. I guess we did. I'm sorry, I talked about this. So, this notion of casting and there's a Matic cast, and now it's like right. this kind of standard, but Apple has their own thing and Google has their own yeah, thing. We talked about Miracast this last week. has yeah, its yeah. own thing. Yeah. And, you know, 
one of the nice things when you stay in Apple, you don't have to know the names of anything. It just works. No, it just and, works. Uh, there is, as long the, as you stay in the Apple. Right. But this is the con this garden. is the same conversation that I would have about Google, which is there are these two opposing ideas that that are not mutually exclusive. They're horrible, but they're also really good. They, yeah. they there are parts of what they do that are just terrible. And, uh, and then there are parts that are beneficial to you. So those things can coexist. They do. They literally coexist, right? Nothing's perfect. Well, and, and, and in a way, this is true of Microsoft, that if Microsoft were willing to, to make a pure ecosystem play like Apple does, things might work together better. So well, Microsoft still has this yeah, kind of yeah. open, we're a platform and we, we well, want to give more value to the people who I, use I, us. I, and, I, but, oh and it, it almost screws them over. Right. Yeah. This is a, so a par part of this is cultural, right? Microsoft came up in the world and became successful because of partners, PC makers in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they got, became successful in uh, small businesses, work groups, and then big businesses because of partners in that space as well. Isn't that what Satin Nadella said is the definition of a platform is something that makes more money for its partners than it does for the yeah, yeah, but for Microsoft. Microsoft. Well, that's Gates's line originally. Is that Gates' line? Yeah. And it was say, 10 yeah. times. What do Microsoft you say? is also the uh, the mafia in this situation because they yeah. changed the deal over time. This is like <laughs> uh, Darth Vader and Cloud City. Pray they don't <laughs> they alter it any further. They yeah. just well, want to no, taste. Well, no, because in the beginning, uh, Richard was talking about this last week. We used to have uh, small business servers, right? We used, right. To have the, we used to have a partner ecosystem where they would go yeah. out to your place of business and manage the stuff for you. They could do it remotely, but sometimes they would have to show up and mm -hmm. they were like this middleman. And eventually Microsoft was like, you know, we're moving to the cloud. We can, who could better uh, manage uh, exchange than the company that built it? Uh, we, you don't have to have on uh, prem infrastructure anymore. Well, that kind of cuts out that whole partner ecosystem, doesn't it? It they, did, but also those mail servers were not well patched, right? Like that's where the half DM exploit went. Like oh, no, it, be I, it became abundantly clear that it was a better experience. For all. They for can users. be good and bad. That's my, yeah. I mean, it's nothing is, you know, nothing is absolute. But, the, but in the end, what you have is if you are not, not, not again, not absolutely, but a, most, no, I don't even know, a lot of Microsoft customers now are dealing with Microsoft directly. Whereas in the past, mm -hmm. there was a middleman, you know, right. a partner. Yeah, um, there's more partner. middlemen than you know, right? Okay. There still is a partner ecosystem. There's certainly a licensing ecosystem okay. that abstracts it's a lot yeah, of this it's, stuff. It's just not what it was, you know, because yeah, uh, it, it is changed. Now you but, have... They've also put a lot more requirements on partners. Like it's tough to be a partner now where yeah. they were pretty generous about it. And that's but look, this goes bad, back right? to the origin. The, the Gates figured out that if you're in the hardware business, you're a chump, right? right. Like Except because that Apple that, figured out if you are, you're the biggest and, company in the world. Yes. It, it's that's just because those... markets changed. But I know. his whole idea of sell the, sell the languages for everybody. So that if you learn a Microsoft language, you can run on anything. Sell the operating system for everybody. So if you can, you know, you learn yeah. that, it runs everywhere. And they're not bound to any given set of hardware. That was the origins of the company. And they've sure. struggled to move past that. Dot How many Net times was... have they gotten into hardware and gotten back out again? Yeah, because no one can duplicate that thing that Apple did. That was, you know, that is well, Because it's the it. anomaly. I know. Not that's even Apple I mean. can it's, duplicate it's, it. It's the exception they, that proves oh, the rule. In fact, you know. yeah. in fact Apple yeah. uh, they made the now, Newton. They're, and they're now saying, well, yeah. the future is not in selling hardware, but in sure. re average revenue per user. Services well, okay. is the future. Now they're a software company. So average revenue per user is actually a great Microsoft metric because Microsoft, which does not have an appreciable market share for its own PC business and has nothing in mobile is counting on people to use those right. devices with their software and services, right? right. Um, the, the thing with Apple though, is that this is like a new business. This is the services business, right? So, but, but it, I think it's Apple adjusting. It's, yeah. it's, it's, well, it's, uh, uh, well so it's saying I, we're not just a hardware and company anymore because in fact it, that we've hit, we've set, the real problem is they've saturated. And so right. hardware sales that, are, it's are a diminishing. different problem. Um, so, their, their hardware business continues to be successful. It's not that we move to a new Apple where, because that, if Apple was a services business, their stuff would have to be everywhere, right? right. Um, they only right. want their stuff on. So they have a complementary set of hardware and ser services. Yes, that, actually, that's a better way you know, of putting it. Yes, and, I, right. and, and it's a captive audience. And, uh, and they're, you know, yes, uh, the, the reason Apple moved into services, honestly, was because of growth, right? They had right. such heady growth right. for so many years. Once you so saturate the market, market and, and yeah, yeah, well, I'm it, pretty it, sure it, they were hard. looking over at the other folks that were running the services for their customers saying, we right. want that money. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. And that way, every one of these companies is jealous of the ways that the other 
Yeah, no, it's a grass. Right? It's greener effect. There's the services right, right there. Apple yeah. One, Apple TV Plus, Apple Music, Apple Arcade. By the way, many of these services are horrible. Apple yep. uh, yeah, News is, it, is as bad as Microsoft News. That's right. But if you buy Apple One, you get it all. And so get I guess... Yeah, yeah, and then you'll yeah. get in there and then you're like a tick. And, and a lot of the out. services revenue is that $20 billion from Google, I should point out. That is right. one of the services is selling your data to Google. Yeah, you notice they don't promote that on <laughs> stage. They don't, they don't talk about the... That's uh, actually a big chunk of it. The grift that they're doing with Google. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we we got to talk about this epic case because okay. it is at, because it's an Apple loss. There's not a lot of Apple losses out there. Yeah, but look how they turned a loss into a victory. Uh, it's well, fun. and look how they're going to end up in court. And listen, this is one of those things where it, look, all, the three of us and then everyone listening to this, we all have super strong opinions about everything, yeah. right? And and the thing I'll say about App, Epic versus Apple that I think everyone will agree on is that regardless of your stance, uh, the ruling is the ruling and Apple has to do a certain thing and they're end running around it in, in a way that they're still they going to charge. They're still going to make all the fees. And I'm sorry, that does not violate the spirit of this <laughs> requirement at all. No. And so I think Epic is actually going to prevail here. Um, and that's an opinion. Um, but just to fill you in, on yeah. Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court decided, declined to review the lower yeah. court decision, which held mm -hmm. Apple. Uh, in, on one count of the, I think there were nine yeah. total. Uh, well, at one fault, of the two most and important they said, counts, though. You right? have I mean, to be able, you have to allow third parties to refer, using Amazon as an example. When I go to the Kindle app on iOS, it says you can't buy books here. And they're not allowed to say where you can buy books. <laughs> They can't say, just go to our Amazon store and buy them. They, they say, you just can't buy them here. Uh, uh, now they'll be able to put a link in to Amazon.com and you'll be able to click that link and buy the book there. Yeah. But Apple's but. retort to that is, well, we're still going to charge you 27 Well, so, and, and, and the, <laughs> what they did was because they've been working on this for months is they altered their arrangement with developers. They have a new uh, support dog that explains this and you have to make, meet certain technical requirements so Apple can see that you're doing this. You can't have the two things side by side so right. they can see the difference in price. Right. And, uh, and, so, and because you're going through what they call it, I think it's a generic browser instance or whatever, um, you have to log into the third party site mm -hmm. as if you had never been there before. It's not a seamless experience. Uh, so they're making yeah. it more expensive and horrible. Now, do yeah. you think the courts will you say, know. no, that's not the spirit of the judgment and go yes. back and do yep. it right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but that's, that, that's two absolutely years not the spirit of the, right? That's not no, absolutely not the same. Yeah. But this the thing, the thing is, thing when, you've, when you've run out of appeals for your current case, make a new case. Right. <laughs> wow. Well, wow. but I mean, Apple kind of brought this on themselves, right? I mean, it's... Uh, well, they shouldn't have gotten well, this the, far. And the EU is going to ultimately make them... Although they say now, the rumor is now that Apple will respond to the DMA, the EU Digital Markets Act, by making a separate store just for Europe... And everybody else is still going to have to buy through the Apple Store, so they're gonna yeah. they're gonna kick go kicking and screaming all the it's way. The, the dumb part is they could have done this from the outset, right? Yeah. Like you could have saved all of this time and just circumvent, circumvent, yeah, circumvent. Think of the billions of dollars they're making. Well, the lawyers yeah, are that, happy. That, right. So the my, lawyers are happy right. too. Yeah. My point about Google and Apple with regards to App Store fees is always that they know this is going away. This is going to go down dramatically yeah. at some point. But why not milk it for as long as we can? And one of the mm -hmm. great things you can do as a gigantic company fighting small companies is take them to court because yeah. <laughs> you can afford it. And an Epic and a little F you to, I mean, uh, Apple, it'll F you to, Epic was like, now you have to pay our court costs. Or like our oh, yeah, they want seven, it's like 73 million like, in court costs. Anyone who thinks <laughs> Apple is a an ethical oh, or, yeah. you know, fair-minded company of any kind, I'm sorry, but look at what they're doing here. It's tough. A, a tech giant. Mm -hmm. Theme is common well, here, right? right. Uh, look, I mean, they are a publicly held company. They have a fiduciary responsibility. They're stakeholders to maximize profits. But yes. uh, I think As stakeholders with would reasonably say stuff, their marketing is all, it's all about how we're different and we're right. better. And the reason you come here is because we're so much better. And they're not yeah. better. They're just as bad. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, they're not any worse than Microsoft. I'm not claiming that. They're just Honestly, this is this is how the church works. I mean, I don't want to offend yes. anybody, okay. but I'm dying to hear this. One. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you don't, Leo? I'm not so sure. No, actually, before you but, say what you're going to say, for I two thousand years, no, good, no, no, hold on a second. Good, good 
for you to figure out a non-controversial way to explain it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> you can, I don't need to go into Tell me detail, how but you understand what I'm know. saying. That, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. while selling indulgences uh, for yeah, years during the Middle Ages, there you go. Uh, the Catholic ah. Church said, you know, you don't have to go to hell. Just give us some money. There I have go. never heard no, anyone I, explain that the Catholic Church has ever been horrible. I'm surprised to hear this. Um, I think we just referred to the movie Dogma, right? It's like, if you walk through this arch, you're <laughs> forgiven. You're good. Yeah. Right. right. And and you know, while they don't sell indulgences anymore, I think no, you could sure. make a case. Well, you could of you buy one on eBay? I mean, they... <laughs> organized religion here and there, not just Christianity, but other organized religions as well, have yeah. pro pro professed the brotherhood of man while making sure that... <laughs> Everybody else got theirs. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there I mean, is this a, is a, this is a human. I don't think this is Apple, Microsoft. This is a human kind of propensity. Yeah, there you go. Fair enough. I, I actually to one of the many ways that Apple is while like meanwhile religion. stabbing your fellow man in the yes. Back. In other words, uh, you can get to heaven, but only if you agree with exactly what we think, even right. though it's ninety nine point nine percent the same as everything else. And, uh, you know, humans are that, tribal. That's... There was a great, uh, and Elon Musk tweeted it. So I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I, okay. Elon Musk said, you got to watch this Jonathan Haidt, uh, lecture from 2015 about hmm. tribalism. And it's okay. a, it's a really good, I mean, he's did some Ted talks as well. I interviewed him uh, for his book, uh, the righteous mind <laughs> some years ago on triangulation. He's a social psychologist, but he says, look, this has been evolutionarily a very good thing for us to be tribal. It's kept, it's kept the human race afloat, but okay. It has its consequences, and you yep. see tribalism. Well, you start in seeing Apple. the other other people as the others. They're the other. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and you see that happening with Apple, a little less so with Microsoft, but you see it happening in technology. Well, uh, so, it's human. Uh, it's not technology. Um, it's human. It's how humans my, are. Microsoft, uh, until you know the past year, has kind of positioned itself as the you know come in for the hug. You know we're going to work with everyone kind of company. And meanwhile, you know, they do engulf things. and devour. Come on. And I mean, <laughs> they uh, are back Epic in their court battle. They back, you know, they, they, they're also going after these companies uh, through yeah. third parties in a very passive aggressive way that kind of shows you where they, you know, where I just said aggressive I guess aggressive, but my only yeah, point is they're not yeah. unique. This is how humans behave. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's you right. Know? We're all terrible. That's, you know, it was, yeah, it's, we're, it's, we're uh, it's an that's DNA. what's amazing about humanity. We're simultaneously amazing and beautiful and creative and innovative and yeah. the worst sons of ever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just, it's human. It's what being human is. It's a very <laughs> odd mixture. Jesus. Why do we have kids? I, I, what, yeah. what happened there? I don't know. We all had kids. We knew. We, we if we only had known. There's a great uh, poem by Philip Larkin. I can't say it without getting bleeped. Yeah. <laughs> they f you up, your mom and dad. They don't may not mean to, but they do. They yeah. fill you with the faults they had, and add some others just for you. But they were effed up in their turn by right. fools in old time hats and coats who half the time were soppy, stern, and half at each other's throats. I, I had man, a, I had a, wait a minute, I'm not done. This is the best oh, part. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Man hands down misery to man. It deepens like the coastal shelf. So get out early as you can and don't have kids yourself. Yeah. Ta-da. Those are the truly good people, you know? <laughs> Plus, let's face it, they have more money way earlier in life than anyone else, yeah. you know? Going on trips. Yeah, don't have kids. Stuff. And we're yeah. saying this, the three of us all have had kids. So Yeah, yeah. we speak from experience. And we know. I, I had a dark moment. By the way, my... we had a big baby shower today for yeah. Viva, who works in our continuity department, who is having her first oh, child. So Viva, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, what don't are we listen to this show. Yeah, don't, don't listen to this show. What yeah. do you do? Oh, we're just too late now. Old, old, thing. old guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I was worried that I, I can't, it, it occurred to me a long time ago that my kids' best qualities came from my wife and their worst qualities came from me. And I, I had a, I had this discussion with my daughter, Kelly, a couple months ago, and I was, I was very upset about this. And uh, I was like, Kelly, I feel, I'm so bad. I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. You know? Aww. And she looked at me, she said, are you crazy? She goes, do you know what I got from mom? And then she went through this <laughs> list and I was like, Oh, I'm living with a monster. I'm telling you. I'm like, <laughs> F you like, what is that? M and dad. You know? that's yeah, I know. She, had, she had the, the list truth. and I was like, yikes. <laughs> So I guess we're all like Too backstabbing yeah. murderers, really. Yeah. I mean. But they, but they got, but we got it from our parents and they got it from their parents. Yeah. It's just human. It's, it's just a, a great condition. excuse chain. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, we got philosophical right. here. I just, yeah. but I almost just wanted to say it to defend Microsoft's greedy backstabbing corporate 
How could they be any other way? Well, that, by the way, Leo, that's why I'm here to defend <laughs> it. You know, that's my that's been my stance all these thirty years. You know, um, defend oh, the terribleness. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm don't think they have to be this way. I think we can make profits other ways. Well, I, I agree, think. and I wonder if the stock market would understand that if if a company said, look. Short term, our quarterly results may suffer, but right. we are looking long term at the for the benefit of our customers. I, and we you think know what? That's not. Gonna I would this. love that to be the case. It's Absolutely not. not. Yeah. No. Right. I think. So we blame the stock market. Blame the shareholders. Well, mm -hmm. it's so we're blaming capitalism. Right. This is the system. You know. And once you become a publicly held company, you got to yeah. play the game. And Jamie Dimon would like you to believe that. Right. It's, I wish yeah. you could say though. Well, hey, look, I know some people would believe. We this don't need if to you grow said, anymore. Let's just Amazon, do the right thing for our when customers. they started, said it's customer center, customer first. This is the the path to success. And yeah, they lost right. a lot of money for for years. In fact, so yeah. much so they couldn't get more money from the stock market. They had to start borrowing. But eventually, and this is by the way, Corey's prime example of insuredification. Eventually, mm -hmm. they turned it around so they could extract all the money out of this sure. great market that they had built over the years. It was then the, you could hear conscious. the evil laugh growing in the <laughs> background. Where is that coming from? There it is. Money, yeah. money, money, money. Nice. Money makes the world go. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, like I said, I, there's no solving. We're not going to walk away feeling fulfilled in any way. There's no solving this problem. It's just the terribleness that is our world and, and, I don't know the answer. I can tell you what the the answer to big tech is not uh, vinyl and uh, uh, carburetor cars and you know it's not it's not this nonsense going back nostalgia. ain't good either. No, that's that's not no. <laughs> Sorry. So I, I I but I don't have an answer. I don't think I no one does. No. Um. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> so. Um, you want to see, cover these little... was the second thing in the... Yeah. Thing yeah. In the, uh, <laughs> you want to cover the little... <laughs> well, that's the first year. Yeah. The EU stuff. Well, these are the big buckets, though. Yeah. Yeah. You... So that was yeah. the first of the big controversies of this past week. The second, also a surprise, came out of nowhere. And I'm, I'll, I'll just preface this by saying... I, I've gone through what I think of as the seven stages of guilt when it comes to AI. It is, it isn't, it's great, it's crazy, you know, but, but whatever. Richard, very calmly, rationally was like, nope, uh, this is the year 2023 where we're, you know, Microsoft is going to announce things and then 2024 is going to be when they implement them, right? And by the time I hit the end of the year, I was, I was on board with that. Yep, he was right all along. And uh, we didn't realize how right he was because less than two weeks into the year, they implemented everything. <laughs> it's some, I, I, have, I, I, I thought last year was crazy. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, if you had said to me, this is how 2024 is going to go down. They're going to slowly <laughs> expand Copilot for Microsoft 365 to bigger businesses and maybe lower the the 300 license, you know. Uh, yeah, smaller baseline. businesses. Go, yeah, they yeah. got all the big they'll ones. Move, they're, they're they'll move that, right? Yeah. They had said, we're going to bring this to consumers. So maybe sometime by mid-year, you know, second half of the year, um, we'll have a third tier of uh, consumer Microsoft 365, which is a little more expensive, you know. Uh, we'll have the AI stuff, maybe. Um, we're going to eventually allow, I mean, look, there was no version of 2024 where they were going to let people, like individuals, build GPTs of their own. I don't even know why anyone would want to do that as a, like a normal mainstream human being. They did all of their, everything I said and more three days ago. <laughs> like it's all, it's out. Well, the the GPT builder is coming, but they announced it. Um, I. I I don't know. I don't even know what to say anymore. And um, well, I do. I have one thing to say about this, but Copilot Pro is the consumer product. Co Copilot Pro is basically Copilot for Microsoft 365, but for consumers, right? It adds the AI features that are in all the office apps. Um, it, it gives you some consumer oriented things like the, uh, whatever they're calling the image creator thing today. Um, you get uh, extra credits and extra quality and uh, peak time usage and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to get this Copilot GPT builder. So you can build your own little personal GPT. And uh, this is the kind of thing Richard is actually doing right now. I think Leo is too. I've done it been, with uh, OpenAI's chat GPT, which yeah. is the same, right? Yep. So, and I've been, t I've been thinking about how, how would I do this for myself? I have, uh, you know, 30 years of archives. And Perfect. I, I, Put, I, I, make a Paul Therod expert system. You'll never have to write yeah. another article. Well, be, well, not, 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 not write another article, but rather one of the weird problems I have because of how much I write is that I can't Oh, did remember. I write this before? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, did I do this or, or yeah. what did I say about this or what, you know, yeah. and finding this stuff is actually very difficult. So 
um, that would you know be useful to me personally. I can't imagine anyone else would need this thing. But, but imagine anyway, if I, MSDN and TechNet could have been put into yes, a, well, uh, yeah, a I mean, expert <laughs> system, right? Sure. I don't know why they haven't done that. Frankly, I maybe that is what Microsoft Learn becomes, right? Mm -hmm, um, yeah. You know, we'll see. So. They just announced a flurry of things. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I mentioned uh, my Copilot Pro for consumers, right? Which is the consumer version of Copilot. It's the for same price as ChatGPT. So $20 I twenty dollars per user per month. That's what I you, pay you right now. You have to have a Microsoft 365 subscription. You okay, can't but I have that as a consumer, and you have to. I'm sorry, I should say it has to be personal or family. Because remember, there's the I base do have one that. now. Yeah. Uh, and then, so you pay whatever you so pay for that. I wonder if that would be better or worse or like, it's the same. Is let it? me, you know what? Let's talk about that in one second, but let me just get through this okay. list. Cause I, I actually I do want to talk about that. I think this is, that's an important point. Um, if you have a Microsoft 365 business account, you might do that as your own. Like you have a custom domain. You're like, I have the basic uh, thing. You can't do Copilot Pro. You have that's to so do That's so weird. A, you have to yeah. do the $30 business one. Yep. So they have the $30 business one that's available basically to all businesses. They've removed the exceptions. They've removed the baseline uh, number of licenses. It's no more so 300. Yeah. So basically everyone on business can now get that. Um, Copilot well, is 10 bucks a month more, which is weird. It is right. But we're going to that, that what I want to get to that. Um, Copilot on mobile means there's an iOS and an Android native app for Copilot, which they released and never discussed back in December. This is why. Um, and then Copilot is appearing also in the Microsoft 365 mobile app, which remembers the all up. It's, Kind of like OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, I think, all in one app or whatever. Um, it's going to be in there well as, as well, if it isn't already. And then I think the most confusing thing, honestly, when I think about mainstream users and Copilot and AI, I, honestly, I got to say the terminology is maybe the biggest hurdle. So this notion that they're going to give individuals like a Copilot GPT builder, I'm pretty sure this is the first time Microsoft has used GPT as the name of anything in their little ecosystem. It, you know, I, I think people associate that with open AI and chat GPT, but it's okay. Copilot GPT builder. In other words, you're going to build mm -hmm. your own Copilot essentially, right? Okay, cool. All right. So why is uh, the business version of Copilot 10 bucks more per month? Um, it's because of the Microsoft graph, right? The, the missing piece for Microsoft on the consumer side right now, it's why Copilot and Windows 11 is so lame is that they don't have that thing on the back end that ties together all those disparate data sources that exist in an organization. Um, what they're trying to do is leach in all of your email through Outlook, leach in all of your personal data through OneDrive, um, leach in all of your activity online through Edge, and then use that as sort of a mini Microsoft graph. But the reality is it, you know, it's, not, it's not there, right? So um, I think that's why. It's also uh, the difference between what I would call like a, commercially backed, licensed, supported service versus we're going to let you make cute pictures with, uh, you know, Bing on, or whatever they're calling it, Copilot now. Um, you know, it, it, it's consumery, right? I, I think 20 bucks per month. Look, when you're paying as an individual 69 bucks a year for 12 months of this service and you have to pay an additional $20, not for the year, but every single month, I think you've just eliminated 99% of the people out there who are like, wait, what? <laughs> that is not... That is not a, that that's incommensurate with the cost yeah. of the thing. And, like and arguably a lot of the value isn't there because you don't have this big graph data set that right. the companies are taking advantage of. Yep. So but that might also be intentional. Like I, I feel, I'm not, I'm, I feel like yes. they've rushed this out just to see what would happen. So let, let, I think you're right. And I, and I think by making it prohibitively expensive or restrictive, which is what they did in November, and now it's just expensive, um, they're cutting down on the number of people who are going to try it and then come out and say, this is garbage. Because one of the big problems for Microsoft is in their rush to AI and now their mm -hmm. rush to implement it, what happens if they poison it? What if so many people say this is garbage that they never come back? Right. This yeah, is so a real it's worth danger. a slow rollout. I mean, I would point out that the $20 a month is what you play for chat GPT plus. So it's like, this is the alternative offering. Yeah. But what do you pay for um, Copilot, uh, GitHub Copilot? 10. Right. See, to me, that's a very targeted offering with a very clear value proposition. And it, it is expected it, to it, go up. Right? And you like, can't okay. make a GPT with it. But it, at, okay. But at $10 to but me, it's code focus. that's commensurate with the value that you get. I, that, in fact, it's, if anything, it's almost a no-brainer. I would argue that, I will argue that almost any developer should probably have this, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, without a doubt, it. and one would argue it should be twenty, and the consumer version okay. should be ten. There you go. But, that's but, oh, that's but the market currently right. says twenty dollars. But, but even yeah. at ten, 
you have more than doubled the cost of this annual subscription. Yeah. You know, for $100 per month, you get a terabyte of storage for six users. Um, all of the off, uh, all the Office apps downloaded to as many computers as you want. Uh, all of the Office apps in, with their full uh, feature set enabled on mobile and on the web. And uh, then you double that price and you get, I'm sorry, a, a couple of AI features. And, you know, like the, the one of the arguments I made in this article I wrote about this was that, like, no, no one uses all of Office, right? So I'm not going to look and well, say you can't even right. list all of Office. Like, right. it's not so a good thing. There are 24 new features in Office because of AI. Well, guess what? I only use Word. Well, how many mm -hmm. features are there in Word? Four. And how many am I going to use? Uh, one of them might be interesting. Is that worth $20 a month? I mean, that's a lot of money. And that's really, that's the pragmatic real world human being yeah way but of only thinking, in the context know. of what you were already paying isn't yeah. it price chat though, gpt is 20 bucks this is 20 bucks isn't also price somewhat because it's so expensive for them to run they have to well they, you know what though? isn't the price related i don't think they're the at break cost? even that yet sound, that sounds like no. a microsoft problem not a customer problem so mm -hmm. You know, look at it this way. Uh, back in the back in the day, <laughs> we used to have standalone Office products that would come out every three years, right? Office 2013, Office whatever, you know, all the different versions. Microsoft was like, you know, it would be better than this because these people are only paying us like once or twice a lifetime is if we could get them on a subscription, right? So we'll make it like, um, you know, we'll make it uh, useful and we'll make it um, inexpensive. Well, how do we get them to pay for that? Well, we'll only put the new features in the subscription, right? So if you don't buy a new version of Office every three or six years, you're not getting any new features. The new features are all coming through the Microsoft 365 subscription. And my God, did they go to town on that? Yeah, we talked about this, how well, hard it was yeah, to keep up. A part, And part of that was it was easier to develop in the cloud. You can slip small features in and you can well, I'm talking do about the, uh, and you can I'm, benchmark it. But I mean... I, I'm talking about all the clients. I mean, like the mm -hmm. every month, the Office desktop clients on Mac and, and Windows on mobile in the web would all be, there was some matrix of new features all the yep, time. All the time. So that kind of, you know, it hits some point. There's there's a weird thing, like the, the standalone Office user base was over a billion, probably 1.5, 1.6 billion at one point. The uh, Microsoft 365 subscriber base is somewhere in the three, maybe 400 million point, but more lucrative because it's money every month. So what's the next step beyond that? Stop giving them new features. Claim that these new features are AI and make that a new tier, right? And But the thing is, it's so much more expensive than the thing you're already paying for, whether it's yeah. on the consumer So you don't want them to compare system. them that way. Like you're comparing except, it. Except when you're comparing it to ChatGPT. Well, no, I was going to compare it to the past. If you compare the features they've added, and by the way, it's not like they're going to come up with that many new AI features every month now. But if you could pick any given month, you could go back in time to 2017, 2018, whatever you pick a year, don't care. Pick a month, don't care. Look look at the 117 new features they put into Office and compare it to the seven they just added and then compare the, the value of the relative features. And I'm telling you, it was better back then. And now, not only am I going to have to pay more to get that handful of new feature stuff, it, it, there's, it's not going to keep coming. Um, now I just get to pay to have this functional level. It's like a, they've added not just a new tier, but a really expensive new tier. You know, the development is much easier in small increments, constantly deploying, testing and adjusting. Yeah. And But the downside is you don't get a big bang version number anymore. Right. And so it's hard to market that. It is. Now with more incremental feature improvements, right? Like right, it's just, exactly. you, right. you want to have a party for a big version and you can't give them the features over 18 months and then go, and now what? we'll call that a version, right? Like it's, it's very um, problematic. It's a better it way to build software, but allows your way to sell it. Yeah. Windows suffers from the same problem, you know, um, so you know, let's just leave it on Windows for, versus yeah, Agile. Yeah. It's a, it's a problem, thing, right? Right. Yeah, um, and Windows doesn't really, because they're not selling new versions. So Windows constantly it comes with the machine right. and it was licensed through the vendor. So if you I like at, incremental improvements, I want my you know, uh, AI to get smarter every day. Yeah. Uh, maybe not every day, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, you're right. You're right. Um, later in the show, help we'll me talk decide about, though, if I should give Microsoft my 20 bucks or open AI, my 20 bucks, which right. is actually the question you should be talking and, about. Right? Or, or should you give them 30 bucks and do the commercial version? And no, what, how do those things kind of line up? I no, I mean, well, but what's some the relative should. value? Yeah. So but, as an individual, uh, I think yeah. if I used Office a lot, then I would probably want the. Uh, so it would depend. Let, let's say right? you're a you're an accountant, right? So you're in Outlook, you're in Teams, you're in Excel, 
Right. Those are your apps. You right? can do spreadsheets. So like you that. can go up to Copilot Pro and and go yeah. look down the feature list and see like, well, okay, what what do I get? You know, if um, Word didn't respect me, I'm not sure I'd want it. Right. And since Word does not respect you, it doesn't. Re or, hey, AI, <laughs> could, could I get? What do I have AI to do? AI do definitely you to doesn't respect me? anybody. <laughs> uh, this is a lot of anthropomorphization for me. Thanks. <laughs> Software has no ability to respect. It respects nobody. <laughs> yeah, guns don't kill people, Richard. You know that. Um, <laughs> or bullies don't kill people. Software um, developers do. That's right. Yeah, oh, bastards. So, uh, so which should I buy? Is there, is there an API I, I key, can't. for instance, with Bing Chat? Do you get an API key? So one of the things that's coming, like we said, was this Chat GPT builder. I You might want to hold off and see what that looks like. Yeah, because I, I like that's the, the fact that I can build a, a, chat, a custom GPT. I also like that I can provide an API key uh, to uh, third parties right. and, and add my uh, Chat GPT to that. And that is a very important feature. So, so this is the business the, version, but uh, yeah, the Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, I, no, I'm sorry. The, the Copilot ecosystem is such that a lot of the stuff that happens on the open AI site should transfer hundred percent, right? It's the same Those thing are, they're, they're talking about. They're the same plugin model, right? They so, have chat GPT-4. So that they that have helps Turbo. support ability. If that, if you're worried yeah. short term, you know, like at least, yeah. you know, that should be pretty straightforward. Um, ideally, what we need is the, the AI version of cloud native <laughs> where you could easily bring right. your, doesn't models matter. over to a different, like to Google or Amazon or whatever happens to be out there. Um, so we'll see. Obviously, in these early stages, it's astonishing there's any partnership, right? I mean, um, in a way, but I don't know. I, I can't answer that question. I, I've not used the uh, the uh, right. OpenAI stuff, so I'm going to keep my OpenAI. Uh, I did. I did start paying for Copilot Pro. Yeah. So I could explain, uh, you know, see how this works for now. Right. Cool. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm in the open AI camp too. I, I was saying before the show, it's like my I, I'm looking at my billing on my API, working through Home Assistant. It's going to come up to about a dollar, dollar fifty a month. Yeah, nice. But uh, you know, and any and it's a day to day utilization. Which is, by the way, that's that itself is very interesting. Um, when Microsoft launched what was then called Windows Azure a million years ago, mm. one of the big open questions was like. We're not really sure what the billing is going to look like here, right? So we're, we're, we're in the early days. They were like, we're going to send you three months of fake bills based on your usage. We're gonna you're going to see what we think we would charge you, and uh, you know, tell us what you think, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but in this case, uh, we're still we're just as early in the game, and it, it, in that case, it's making sense for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, financially, uh, which well, wasn't always I, the I, case. I, but I'm also the kind of guy who goes and looks at logs to figure out. Like, I'm not going to be surprised at the end of the month. I'm, uh, you know, I know better. Yeah. Right, like, right. Like I would have had a very different reaction. It was like, oh, there's a hundred bucks, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, we, um, so when we moved into this uh, condo, there's a, a gas like fireplace. We never had one of these things. We always thought this was lazy. We like wood and, you know. Oh fires. no, it's the best. Oh no, it's the best. In fact, my yeah. cats are um, addicted to it now. It's actually oh, the cats. They're, they they oh. creep ever closer to the, oh, the burning hot it. slate bottom of oh, the thing. I, the hotter, they're, they're, the better. They're yeah. like little pizzas. They turn over to keep themselves from dying, I guess. Oh, yeah. so it's amazing. Even eating we out their like, leopard spotting, yes. <laughs> but we but the question was, it's cold now, right? And we we, we run this thing every day. We run it in the morning, we run it at night. You know, the oh, cats it's really love expensive. It. Get ready. We're like, how, we're like, what's this gonna look like? <laughs> it's so we got cost the first you bill. So much. No, the first bill was hundred bucks. We're like, Oh, okay. okay. No, we can do that. We can do that. We, it's gonna be okay. But yeah, if that bill had been four hundred dollars, yeah. oh sorry, cats, you're freezing your ass. Yeah. Like we're done. You, you can know. die now. Yep. Make your own heat. Yeah, uh, it's kind of for. I always think of it as a, it's a cosmetic heater. <laughs> it's not. A, mm. It's a. It, it actually. Heater. It's very warm in front of it. Right in front of yeah. it. It's very warm. Mm. Like yeah. We don't have a. Like, there's no temperature. Some of like we modern a, ones. I think we have a heat can, pump, so it's a, a, yeah. a much more efficient to use the heat pump. I think than it is to. Well, we've okay. been, we got baseboards in here, but we've been using wood. So yeah. we, we cut a bunch of trees you know, on the property the that needed to get chop those trees well, down. So hold on, burn they, them, it was that, it was that or they fell plenty down. Plenty of trees, Leo. I don't know. Like you know, it's not like a bunch of them burned down this year. <laughs> yeah. Just um, take that tree <laughs> and put it in the atmosphere as yeah, carbon yes. and let well, it protect the whole dioxide. planet. There you go. Yeah, so you and, cool and the whole, whole planet, planet warms up. The cats are going to be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> It's two degrees Celsius. Between friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, our uh, stove or whatever it's called, a uh, fireplace works if the power goes out. That we <laughs> so we may need it. Right. We might be. No, it's nice to have a gas cell. backup. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of yeah. neat. So, yeah. Anywho, uh, um, anywho, anywho. Yeah. So all this co-pilot stuff just happened. I, I have my concerns about you know maybe they're going too fast. Um, you know, we'll see. I'm kind oh. of interested to see. 
My God, it was like January 14th it's not, or 15th. It's going the so fast, but it's, oh is God, it too fast is a different question. If, if Christmas, uh, the holidays hadn't occurred, they would have released this thing on December 2nd. Like they were, they, <laughs> they've been raring to go they're on not, this. They're going fast. You know? All right, it's we didn't get our uh, pause in. No. So no. Co actually, let's do the Galaxy thing because you were going to do that. Yeah. So, you, uh, so when they, you well, get you to were, the end of this uh, AI segment. This is we'll, the end. We'll I mean, so I, I didn't get to watch the Galaxy event. I saw some I of the headlines. To. I right. did see that Samsung partnered with Google on their Gemini LLM. Yeah, for the so phone. am They're I actually wrong? Putting it on the phone. But didn't, uh, maybe it wasn't last year, but in years <laughs> past, hasn't Microsoft had a presence at these Galaxy events? I feel they like they have. have. I don't know. Was it a regular presence? I mean, we. I feel like uh, it was. As recently and there, and, as last week, we talked about your their phone, you know, the phone link thing. And, and now there's a, a, a special thing if you have a Samsung uh, Galaxy Book laptop and a Samsung phone and use yeah. phone link, you get additional features, right? And and another thing, in previous years, Samsung was loath to mention Google. In fact, I can remember a Samsung Galaxy event, they didn't mention Android. Like, yeah. oh, so you know, I, it's our for own For years, thing. I was working on the theory that Samsung was trying to eliminate Google exactly. and Android from the equation, and that the exactly. way we would know they were finally there is when they released things like Samsung Maps. Right. And, you know, like, because they, you know, they have their own browser, their own email, their yeah, own messages, their everything. own phone, their, you know. Yeah. So, so something it, weird happened because all of a sudden yeah. they're in partnership. Yeah, Maybe Google's paying them $20 thing. billion yeah. Dollars yeah. a year. What do you well, think? Well, so when Google, went, I'm sorry, when Samsung did their smart things, smart home platform, they went that alone, right? That was mm -hmm. their own thing. They didn't partner with Google and Google mm -hmm. Home or whatever system. They have Tizen, their own kind of yep. anti-Android. Yep. Although, yeah, we, but now, see, they've got, no, but they're but now, where for, no, now they're back. That's right. They're back. It's where. So yeah. I'm really wondering if Samsung and Google are having a wrapper. Or are, are mending the fence. In yeah. fact, I'll go even further. And I wonder if Google is kind of, I, I've never really understood why Google feels like it has to have a phone itself. Uh, well, mm. you need a reference phone. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, and is it? It's, it, it's it's sort of is like, it a reference phone? It used to be in the early the days. It was rationale for Surface I could make, which I can't because they don't actually do this. Would be if they did that, right? right. Because Google's they used to have this thing called either. Signature PC. Remember, Google right. used their own processors. Signature They're PC not. was like their version of Nexus, and right. then Surface is like their so version they of Pixel. Killed right? It. Yeah. Um, so I do think there's a a place in the world for, especially in an open ecosystem, right? Apple does their own thing, so that you know we can't count that. But on the other side of the fence. Uh, where Samsung is a great example of polluting this Android experience with their own stuff. Some of it's mm -hmm. good. Most of it's terrible. There are apps you can't uninstall, right? They're, I mean, they duplicate apps. It's a mess, oh, right? You and I both own um, Pixels because we yeah. want the right. signature and I, like, I like Pixel that experience. experience. Yep, yeah, I really do. And um, but I would hate Google. I would, you know, Google kills stuff. I know. And they have never seen any level of success that makes That's them right. look like they're in the same market as the iPhone. That's right. right? This is the problem. Or uh, even close to Samsung. The, the iPhone just surpassed Samsung for Globally, sm you know yeah. smartphone sales in a year. Yeah, I, you know, Samsung. The, the one thing you could always say was like, look, yeah, too much crap. Where they do their own UI, which is honestly pretty good, uh, and they do their own services and they have their own ecosystem stuff. You know, they get earbuds and blah blah blah, whatever. They have all this stuff. Was like, well, you know, but they they sell so many of these things, right? So it it you kind of have to pay attention to it because they're so big and they still are, but. Um, that the fact that they were just beaten by like a monoculture company is like got to be a little scary for both Google and Samsung. Right? Here's my scenario. Samsung is very much threatened by the Chinese companies. Huawei, Xiaomi, yeah. and some names well, you haven't heard China, of. I mean, Transmissible. Uh, Apple is too, right? I mean, to some degree. Yeah, yeah. These guys are coming. Yeah. And uh, and Samsung is, is more threatened than Apple by these guys. So that's, on the one hand, the pressure on that hand. Yeah, they would like to be out. Well, thank God for the United States uh, blocking all the Chinese stuff. Yeah, right? I mean, right. You know. And then, Here's, on the other hand, Google, I think, looks at yeah. the Pixel who cares who they says, we with? spent a lot of money to make this thing, and we don't make any money on it. It's a tiny business. We haven't, we've got no mind share out of it. Maybe it's time to kill it. Oh boy, so I, that that depresses me so much. I, I and I I'm I'm not li arguing the logic of it. I it it totally makes sense to me. I as someone who loves Surface but also argues this thing doesn't make any sense. I don't I, know why Microsoft keeps making Surface. I know anymore. you yeah. could you could make the same argument for Pixel. Yeah. And I hate that because I really do prefer 
that it's not a see people get this wrong all the time like it's some kind of a clean pure android version it's not it's actually very heavily modified this is not the thing they give to samsung and then samsung screws it right. up like they're building their own stuff on top no, of it and absolutely. honestly it really meets the bar of their marketing where it's like the helpful phone that, you know, it answers spam calls and turns them away. It, it, it does us awesome. It's awesome at all that stuff. Um, and yeah, I worry every day that it's going to go away every mm -mm. day. Yeah. I really do. It's you awful. Ta you're talking about no co-pilot in the S24, but didn't literally last week you were talking about how the book four had an exclusive version of co-pilot. This is the, well, this is the, Yes, uh, the Copilot in Windows 11, like the. the okay, the, but it's only it was for the Samsung Galaxy Book Four. If you had a Book Four, a high-end Samsung phone of whatever generation, mm -hmm. and we're running well, you would be running Windows 11. Yes, your Copilot experience has some additional features. Okay, oh, well, yeah, but nothing on the S24. But that's not like the. No, oh, I, well, no, no, I'm sorry. In fact, sorry, sorry, Samsung's sorry, using sorry. Google's Excuse uh, me. AI, Gemini. they're using Gemini yeah. this is, for everything. This is me. And that's, yeah. I thought, I wrote interesting. That poorly. I'm sorry. What I Bixby meant was, is not, Bixby's long gone. Let me, and now let me, it's let Gemini. Me <laughs> no, it's like no copilot. Like in other words, um, like local, like SLM or whatever they're calling it. Like um, uh, Google has... Um, Samsung has partnered with Google for their Gemini. Like right. uh, when they announced Gemini in early December, they announced that Pixel 8 Pro only would be the first phone to have this thing locally. Now, uh, Samsung S24 Ultra, I don't know all of them, but at least Ultra will have it as well. They, the way they're uh, using the NPU designation, Microsoft's oh, NPU. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. And uh, because uh, Qualcomm chips do not use that terminology. Yeah. <laughs> um, Samsung is using Exynos again, but not well, in the U.S. They're going to use Qualcomm. Uh, the US, yeah. 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 Um, but Qualcomm so they must does have their have own a, uh, NPU or whatever exactly. they're calling it, right? Yeah. Right. And Qualcomm and Google, I mean, sorry, uh, Samsung and Google announced that they're going to have a joint sharing platform, that there won't be... Uh, uh, two, they'll yes. be one. So they, they, this was announced at CES. Yeah. So um, right. this is, uh, Google used to have something called Nearby Share or Nearby Sharing. And uh, they're combining that with Quick Share from Samsung and calling it Quick Share, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is the Samsung name. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was not happy with the Nearby Share name because Windows 11 has a nearly identically named feature and they're not compatible. And uh, so- There's reasons. It'd be nice if this were all- you know, Apple, Samsung, well, Google, the thing Windows, is, would all I, said, I think I said this as recently as last week. I feel like I, I've always felt, long felt, that there's a missed opportunity with Google and Microsoft for them to partner to meet this ecosystem threat from Apple. But now that you see what's happening with Samsung, you're like, okay, maybe that's actually, that might even be the better company, right? I mean, um, they do make the best-selling Android phones by far. I bet Samsung... That's probably not true. I was going to say Samsung might, might be bigger than the rest of the market combined. That's not true. I have um, to think that OpenAI and Samsung talked a lot about using ChatGPT. I, if Samsung is a big company. I'm sure they talked to everybody. Yeah, Get so the best it, deal they can, It's right? interesting they chose Gemini. Yeah, maybe it's just about It's money. probably because Google is more incented to get that deal than the other companies, yeah, right? Because right. um, I, I, there is a real, regardless of what happens with Pixel, there is a fragmentation issue in Android um, that I think drives people away. And it, it's the... The, the yang, if you will, to Apple's yin of everything works together. You know, one of right. the problems with Android and and, and the well, broader... But one would argue this is the success of Android. The reason that the Android market as a collective is larger than the Apple market is because you have a whole bunch of vendors who get to do what they want. So this is why the PC was successful for a mm -hmm. long time as well. Yeah. Same thing, right? Um, you know, I would buy like a Dell computer because it's a special feature or something, you know, uh, whatever it might be or whatever it was. Um, but... Uh, you know, I don't know. There's some, there's something to be said. We keep talking about this. You know, the the thing that Apple has been able to see, succeed at that no one else seems to be able to succeed at, um, for all the awfulness as we see it from the outside, there is you know there's some benefit there. And it's they always are be second rate. They are, but side. they are do run the largest portion of the Android market. Uh, you know, they're not By as, they're far. not as, yeah, yeah a part of everybody else combined is larger than them, but they are the single largest. So Android if product. you look at, uh, I don't, I don't think I, yeah, I didn't put it in the notes, but if you look at uh, Android, uh, sorry, smartphone sales from the last quarter and from last year, only IDC has weighed in. So it's just a single source, but Apple surpassed Samsung for the first time in history to be the biggest seller of smartphones in the world. It's a, you know, they're close, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 234 million iPhones in 2023 versus uh, 226.6 for Samsung. 
Um, but it, it, this has been true for a long time. The next yeah. three companies are Xiaomi, Oppo, and something called Transian, right. which are all Chinese companies. Right. Um, I've never even heard of that third one. But most of these products yesterday. only sell in China. They well, th that's true. But no, the one thing, no, anyone who goes no, to Europe, they just sell don't you. sell in yeah. the U.S. They sell that's everywhere right. in the world, but the if U.S. You, yeah, and, and in Mexico, so when we go to Mexico, uh, there are ads everywhere. all over the place for Huawei. Huawei. Yeah, Huawei. Uh, yeah, Huawei, Huawei, Huawei phones, yeah. Huawei earbuds, Huawei. You know th that stuff is still being sold elsewhere. So, right. Here's um, the list. Or at least, yeah. yeah. All so, of them except Samsung and Apple are Chinese companies. Right. They're they're all that's left. Uh, notably, Google not on that list. Motorola mm -hmm. not on that list. Yeah. You know, um, Google's in the they've, others they've just focused with, on the, <laughs> the the North American market. But look at the 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 far right column is the growth or yes. diminution. No, I can't tell from the tiny size. Are you looking at the year or the last quarter? Last, it's la it's uh, year to the, year. The, quarter quarter, quarter over, it's year over year, quarter to quarter. No, but it's the year, the year number, not yeah. the yeah. Okay, yep. So. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, there's yeah, ID, uh, Apple's sales were up 3.7% yeah. for the year. Samsung's were down 13.6% for the year. Yikes. Yikes. Yep. Um, the last quarter went actually not too great. Everybody was down except <laughs> um, for Transient, which is up 30%, know, is whoever the hell they are. That is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about some numbers like this for the PC industry in a little while, but... Um, this is always an interesting time of year because we get to look back and see how things went. And, and is and IDC is pretty reliable in this, right? They are, mm -hmm. but you know, I want to see Gartner and um, right. At least you know, I usually try to average those guys because they they do measure things a little differently. But huh. um, but yeah, I, I, it's probably true that App, I, I wouldn't. I'm not saying that Apple did not surpass uh, Samsung last year and whatever Apple had a blockbuster <laughs> last year uh, at a, at a time when the market overall was not doing great. You know. Yeah. So they're, they're changing some minds. I mean, yeah, uh, you are, I hope, having your mind changed by the fabulous Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat at Thorat.com and Richard Campbell run as radio.com. We've got the back of the book still to come. Windows 11 coming up next. What's new? We have, I can't believe we've gone. I know. Almost two well, hours and not mentioned I Windows. To, <laughs> I wanted to hit the two big ones, right? Because the, yeah. the, this week has just been kind of weird. So actually, I just mentioned this. I'll, we might as well talk about PC sales, right? Oh, yeah. Um, one thing I do every January is I update my little chart. And uh, a couple of interesting things about PC sales is that for the year, 13.25% decline year over year compared to 289 in 2022. But they declined 16 point something percent. I don't see it right here, but 16 point something percent the previous year. And both Gardner and IDC believe that we have bottomed out. And this year we're going to see some growth. Um, it, it may not be fair to point to uh, 2021, which was the 344 million high water mark for the previous decade, that pandemic era, you know, PC boon. But this is the fewest PCs that this industry has sold since 2006 and yikes. Right. <laughs> you know, um, that that's a little scary. Um, and no one's talking about big double digit growth. Right. And um, frankly, if this AI thing on the client doesn't pan out, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to see. I don't know what this, you know, I don't know what to say. Um, Lenovo still number one, uh, 50, no, is that for the year? Yep. 59.4 million units, 23.7% market share. HP close behind number two, uh, Dell number three, Apple, and then Asus. But um, uh, you know, Lenovo, uh, HP, and Dell sell significantly more than um, the other any other company. Uh, Dell is almost twice the size of Apple from a unit sales perspective. Wow. But the, um, the point, you know, the analyst is saying bottomed out, but you don't know how wide the bottom is. It might just sit at two fifty well, for a while. Yeah. So. Um, Yes. So sales did decline in every quarter of the year, but um, it was only a 1.5% decline in the fourth right. quarter. So that, you know, but not it, flat. And, it, and it, it was a year of deferral. Certainly that's, you know, the conversation yeah. I was having with sysadmins was and, that by the extended warranties, like just let, we're not replacing machines right now. Everybody's yeah, a bit that's nervous. right. Stretch it out another year or two. So, and that does speak to it might be a surge, right? Eventually, they, they there is no more extended warranty. That stuff starts to get expensive, and machines right. start to fail. And just from a business PC perspective, which is probably two thirds of the market, um, 
that let you can't put it off forever. <laughs> and so no. you, and you one would argue not, Copilot could move the market on this. It's like, hey, or, you know, so here's I, the hey, we've got to go to eleven because twenty twenty five. Uh, you know, Copilot looks interesting. I want my MPU. Like, there's some cases maybe, for the next two years selling all what the if machines. You, what if you're rabidly anti AI, which mm. I would say some people are. Some people <laughs> so, are, but um, you know, you could those, buy a four. I mean, those will be buying their old gear as they go out of business, right? Because they can't <laughs> <Okay>. compete. <laughs> I happen to be with you on that one, but I'm just yeah. throwing out this is a uh, it's a possibility. Um, we don't know how long you're going to be able to buy a CPU without an MPU attached to it. No, so it's any more than you, you used to choose. You're going to get a coprocessor or not. Like it's kind of silly. Yep. yep. You know, it's going to be in the chip. It's it's going to be marginal cost difference. And but, uh, if you don't want it, don't use it. If you don't, yeah, but if you don't want this stuff at all, just don't buy, buy a PC that doesn't have it. You can do yeah, that right anything. now. Right. You can get, a bunch an, of you can get an abacus. <laughs> I'm not, I'm literally devil's advocating and mm -hmm. I'm not actually saying this. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. Um, but, but it is, in, yeah, uh, it is interesting to see how long the stretch goes because it, we were expecting a catastrophe in 23, which did not come. So now we just think that the, the catastrophe is delayed or passed. And that's, a, that's the debate. So someone has asked in Discord whether I would buy, and I would, I'm going to throw this to you. I'll pass, mm -hmm. hand us off like any delegator. Um, would you still buy an, a PC, recommend buying a PC with an AI chip today, even though there's no compelling use case right now? Yeah. Would you? I mean, the question is. Well, right. the guy who bought the Surface Studio 2, you're going to ask him that? I mean, right. but, okay, but what's your rationale? In other words, you're, you're advising someone else, a friend, right? Yeah. And, and I, what do you say to that? Like, what? I wouldn't think about it at all. Wouldn't it's, think about it? It shouldn't, it wouldn't it shouldn't be part of your decision back to you, oh, making, right? Okay. I think A, any significant AI utilization is going to use on GPUs anyway. And so you can always retrofit anything you want. There's nothing special about the architecture of an MPU. It, yeah, is, a thing, special, right. it is a cheap version of a high-performance video card. That's all it is. There's also, right, I, I would say for the short term, uh, GPUs are going to be the better deal They're, for AI. Without a doubt. Anyway, I, yeah. I, I, uh, you know, uh, and not just compatibility-wise, but performance-wise, right? Yes, yeah, so they are more um, performant, but they're more expensive, and they kick off more heat. Yeah, um, yeah. On the other hand, you can retrofit virtually any machine with one, so it's not a big deal uh, if, you, if you even need to. So I, I personally will not buy a PC that doesn't have one of these chips. And this is just a future proofing. Yeah, you're I not see. a normal human. I know that. That's why I, I, I know. I know. And I also, um, there, there's a debate to be had, and we just don't have enough information to have it, about which of these architectures will actually it, kind of totally. be better, more efficient, yeah. more performant, whatever the, you know. Well, and it's still a big debate of for what? Like, we, for the most part, the cloud vendors want you to run all that stuff on the cloud anyway. So they, we, I'm right. not sure and what I, the MPU is going to yes. do. I meant to make this point when we were talking about Copilot. So mm -hmm. for all of these new um, <laughs> services we can pay for and pay all this money for, uh, not a single lick of it runs off an MPU, not even one, well, not, yeah. not one little thing that runs on an MPU. And it's going to be one of the other interesting little implementation things to look for this year is whether that changes, right? Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, when I think about uh, features in Microsoft Word running on my Windows desktop using AI, mm. um, is is the AI they're using dependent on things in the cloud, or is there some hybrid slash local usage that would make this thing? It's an open question. We'd have to go look at the features and think about that. Yeah, um, and for the most part, everything you've seen so far is running in the cloud. It's cloud. Right? No, not yeah. no, not for the most. Like literally, one hundred percent. It's all. It's all. And it's certainly in the HA community, we're all about can we run local? Because we, you know, the whole right. point is your house works the same whether you're connected to the internet or not. Yeah. And, it, and so, and so far, the experience has been: if you run it local, it, you you can tell because it's lousy. Right. As soon as you start using the OpenAI API, it's good, right? For a buck a month. So it's like, yeah. uh, and, I, right. I, and, and I'm so, the guy with all the horsepower in the world, right? Like I'm going to go harness <laughs> some more machines and see if I can make you yeah. know, make this run. You're well. going to make a farm. Like you're going to have an AI farm by the time we're done with this thing. Yeah, something. Um, you know, it, sooner or later there's going to be this loud fan noise coming from the space yeah. under the stairs. And all the fish will be floating next to your house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. But at least you'll have fish um, and pre cooked. Uh, but I am, yeah, I am I, mounting all that rack gear now on plywood. Cause I'm getting, I'm going totally <laughs> rack free. So I'll make sure it's a flame return plywood. Yes. Yes. I would no say, matters. so then maybe it depends on how you think you will use AI. I, if, if, if all you think you're going to do is the Microsoft 365 copilot slash whatever open AI, which I have bother. yet to use, right? Like get up yeah. copilot almost every day. Now HA pretty much hundred percent in the cloud. Right. So. 
It's at all point, cloud dependent. Yeah. Who cares? You don't need it on the PC. No. But Leo and you, and and hopefully me some, someday soon, yeah. will be working all with have stuff one. locally. And you, and if you're if you see that in your future, you want to get going on that and experimenting with it, I would dive into. I just don't you know, think you know yet. Yeah. What there's no way to know. Right. There's no way to know. You know and. Um, well, in the experience, I can't buy a Mac that doesn't have an NPU. So. Yeah, all the all the M2s <laughs> yeah. have them, right? Like, well, that's, that's going to happen on the PC side. It's just going to yeah, be inevitably. Years, but yeah. but we'll have, you know, it's cheaper to make one chip. Yeah, the question is whether Intel comes out with 15th gen and it's all AP or uh, MPU, or if there's still that divide between MPU and non MPU, and and you know we don't know, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. And AMD. I just thing, think right? of it as future proofing, and it may be as often as the case with future proofing that it was a waste of money. Yeah. Um, it's going to be yeah, agony. Well, um, but it's, it's, like, it's not even cost like saying, more. Uh, life because... insurance is a waste of money. So you didn't right. die. <laughs> so I guess you wasted your money. But <laughs> wasted my money. <laughs> uh, mashed potatoes uh, mentioned, you know, forget about uh, MPU. What about ARM? You know, I'm not, I, I might not never buy anything that doesn't have an ARM chip in it. And honestly, we're pretty damn close to that maybe being a thing, yeah. even on the mm -hmm. Windows side. We'll see. Uh, well, it absolutely we'll see in this uh, in that. May when the GPU. Yeah, uh, that's another way to see. We you know Qualcomm uh, we'll with see. an NPU comes so. in. Yeah, you know uh, we had um, uh, Windows Central Daniel Rubino on on Sunday, mm -hmm. and he actually disagreed that uh, an NPU was just a fancy GPU. He did say that he believes that the NPUs have well, I, capabilities that are more than you know, that are really designed, tuned for AI in a way. That show me the data. Do. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, show, know, show me process. why I have no, where that's true. Like, I don't I, know. Yeah. 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 If you were, what's the, uh, what's that local image um, generation software uh, you can a run? Stable Diffusion or? Stable Diffusion. So uh, I would, I, it might be very telling to look at that app and see how, not on a Qualcomm device, right? Because that's basically just GPU, uh, CPU. But right. now that we have these dedicated uh, GPU um, and GPU, GPU, sorry, and NPU chips in Intel chipsets, um, what what gets hit see the most? See if they run better. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, we we'll see what, which one actually well, makes the bigger difference. I, I hope there's I instrumentation for that, right? Like, show me on the task manager yeah. that it's actually, it might, you it, know, you can see GPU it, it being used, you can't time. see MPU being used. Yeah, we we uh, we didn't we, we didn't do this in any sort of partisan way, but we've kind of been dumping on Nvidia for a while. But we should acknowledge that there's a version of this future where the GPU does win out, right? And that MPU figures something out. I mean, well, I, you know, Nvidia also makes AI versions of their GPUs. Yes. Right? What did I, I say? I'm sorry, I meant NPUs. Well, you said oh, GPU. Oh, oh, so oh, a, a, oh, Nvidia both does GPUs and NPUs. Yeah. I would, you know, I guess MPU well, would be a nice generic term. I think for these. the, the, the it isn't, unfortunately. It's the future of AI thing. is almost certainly both, right? And even the whatever the Intel system and that ultra core, core ultra chipset is called. Let's put it this way: tunnels uh, to both, right? Both Microsoft and Google and Amazon have dedicated AI chips. Google calls them TPUs. And what, are they, what types servers. of chips are they, Leo? What They're not GPUs. They're special. No, but what's, but what's the architecture? Oh, I don't know. Oh, these. You know? I'm sorry. You're talking about on? the AI chips. Because I'm talking about on, at, their, on their on no, their cloud. When, yeah, but when you, you know, look when at you're their doing training in the cloud, CPUs, you're, yeah, no, no. But what are they? About, they're, they're talking about cloud for training. Right. Yes, they have sorry. TPUs that are dedicated. That's right. Uh, and they have their. What is the term? I can't remember. Uh, there's a specific well, term. The, the tensor not, thing. Not, you mean, uh, fl yeah, not flops, not teraflops, or it's a. Something per second or something. Right. I can't remember what it is. PTS or something. But there, but there are dedicated measurements and NPU specific uh, measurements. And um, so I'm going to take it for granted that there is something more than just uh, your yeah, generic it's, it's, GPU will do. This, this, this is going to be a year. Uh, look, there are going to be things that come and go. It's like, um, you know, the first hardware accelerated uh, graphics card, OpenGL based, whatever that was called, the Glide FX or whatever, something FX came and went in a flare you know in a flurry of excitement and was quickly surpassed we might be talking a year from now about how much everything changed on the right. chipset side right you know we'll see i i have to say that there is uh, incentive for companies like microsoft and open ai to get some of the load off their servers that's expensive for them so i think yep. there is going to be progress in local ai I personally, uh, and I think there are probably a lot of businesses feel the same way, would like to use uh, the AI locally. Um, yes. You know? Yep. And I, would. Uh, I have a program, Python program called Chat GPT, or it's called GPT for All. It's an open source there program. It uses, you know, open source models, uh, or it'll use it, by the way, it'll use an open AI API key as well. But if you're but running the model locally, locally, what are you paying 20 bucks a month for? 
Well, you don't. That's right. In well, fact, you don't have to. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. I mean, so, I happen to have an, an so open So what's AI the incentive account. for Microsoft? No, no you, can they download made money on you can download Llama. You can download well, Llama. Well, the, the incentive is you're really talking about a hybrid situation where it's local and cloud and that um, it, it behooves both sides of this transaction to do this, right? It would be better for you as the client because you reduce latency and it's better for Microsoft because you reduce yeah, the cost. I've just never that. actually seen a neural net model that has a two-stage process like that. Like, No, no, yeah. it's either data local or cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't but see do, it doing But don't both. you think businesses would prefer not to exfiltrate their data to the cloud? They'd like to do it yes. all locally. Right? Businesses would prefer to pay for nothing. But the <laughs> not just money, are, but privacy. Well, okay, but <laughs> you know, this is just a, like a like a, a data sovereignty issue. I mean, yeah, people yes, are very I mean, nervous. Companies are very nervous about uh, uh, AI's training on their right. private data. I'm sorry to interrupt. I I, I have to ha at very latest have to be gone by the top of the hour. So, um, oh my like god! Well, let's move right through this then. Anyway, we got to blow through this. I'm so sorry. I I just no. We have a show at the top of the hour, so it's okay. perfect. Um. And yeah, I'm just looking at this list. So we get we, most of this is pretty quick. Um, Microsoft, <laughs> this is only notable because this is representative of something they've been doing a lot lately, and I don't like it. Um, Microsoft launched a new, I'm going to call it a weather experience. It's overstating what it is, but there's always been a weather experience on a lock screen. You can have one thing that's called like a detailed status item. Uh, this dates back to the Windows 8 days when we had quick status items as well. Uh, most people, by default, is set to calendar, but you could set it to weather right now. And um, they just updated it so that it, lo it looks like a tile to me. They're calling it a card, but it's a, it looks like a tile. So it's just a more graphical, bigger thing. And when you click on it and sign in, it goes to MSN weather or whatever. Um, it's not a big deal, uh, other than the fact that they didn't test it almost at all. They just shipped it publicly. <laughs> like they, mm -hmm. they put it into like a, a subset of the, I think it was the beta or dev channel for like three days or something, and then threw it out into stable. It's like, guys, seriously, like, um, kind of strange. So it that didn't, it didn't catch fire. So give it to everybody. Yep. Um, related to this, I think there's an app store. I'm sorry, an app store, a Microsoft store app update um, that. I don't know the um, the history of its being tested in the Insider program, uh, but that has also suddenly appeared very quickly uh, in Stable. And uh, this is just, you're going to see a lot of notifications every time there's an app update, which honestly I find to be incredibly annoying and I thought was already in Stable, but whatever. Um, I have noticed that for sure. Um, and then this is at the bottom of the Windows section. I'm just going to add it here because it kind of makes sense. Um, Dev Home has come to Windows 10. Mm -hmm. Now, the two dark sides to this are, one, remember, no new features. Um, right. <laughs> you know, we've gotten past that. But also, um, this is another example of an app that's not done. It's just kind of half-assed. You know, it's like Loop, New Outlook, Microsoft, well, Windows Backup, you know, Dev Home, like Dev Home. Why is Dev Home a default feature in Windows Windows anything when yeah. most people are not developers? Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, it's I've, kind of a, it's, it's Everybody's a, a developer, thing. Paul. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, I'll, I'll just back up the notes here because this kind of ties into that. Microsoft uh, recording a report, I think by Zach Bowden over at Windows Central, is reportedly going to bring back the Windows Insider program beta channel for Windows 10, wow. which also speaks to that. Oh, no new features. Just kidding. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, so if that does happen, um, that I think will be indicative that Windows 10 and 11 are going to go forward in the lockstep, um, possibly with some, you know, with some of the new features uh, like they did with Copilot and now DevOn. Awesome. Um, Last week, I complained that there were no new, you know, builds semi-recently, uh, less than 24 hours after the show. They released three new builds. Uh, of course, they did. So the dev channel <laughs> they gets heard the, you uh, again. Yeah, whatever USB, the 80 gigabit USB version is going to be called like a Thunderbolt 5 or USB 5, whatever they call it. Uh, they're testing support for that in the dev channel. Um, they're talking about auto-starting Copilot, that pane on the side of the screen. If you have a 27-inch or bigger display, widescreen display. Hmm. Um, yep. <laughs> why, um, why does that matter? Why, why wouldn't it be resolution? Like, uh, because that way it doesn't get in your face. It's not in the way, right? Oh, okay. it, it's, if you have a widescreen display, um, it can be over on the side and you still have kind of a, kind of a widescreen display left, if you will. One of the, you know, a copilot as a new application is not particularly, um, sophisticated when it comes to stuff like running over your existing apps. Like if, if you, if there are apps over there, it will push them out of the way. Right. And when you close it, they don't go back, you know, mm -hmm. like the way Multimon used to work and sometimes still does. Um, and then there's some Windows share improvements that are coming also to the beta channel. Um, they're adding more of those individual apps that can be used for sharing. It's kind of weird. Like, I, I think what's happening is the app makers are not supporting the share feature. 
Right. So they're just adding it manually on an app by app basis. I, I suspect they went to these companies and said, we're just going to do it for you. Is that okay? And they're like, yep. And they're like, you know, uh, so WhatsApp, Gmail, Twitter slash X, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn uh, are all being um, interesting. Yep. Because uh, I mean, somebody wasn't happy with what was being made or not being made. So it's like, we'll just the, do it. The share pane in Windows has been a wasteland since they, right. they came, it was introduced it's, in Windows 8. You know, it, it's, it's nobody, cares. nobody uses it. Nobody uses it. Even yeah. OneDrive doesn't use it. They have their own share window. <laughs> like, seriously, guys. What? Anyway, don't get me started. I read a book about this. It makes me insane. Uh, that weather experience that's out in stable, they're testing it in beta. So, you know, Microsoft. Um, and <laughs> the app install notifications, also out in uh, stable. They're testing that in beta too. Um, also instant arcade games. And this is like we see, I think on, um, I think only Android does this where you can kind of just run it from the Play Store and then it will load the background. I think they're doing that kind of thing for Right, some arcadey smaller games, right? The, the the thing to look at, and we talked about this last week, with this notion uh, of release preview now being the what we call moment five. Um, they released; it's not actually a new build; it's a it's a KB like an update, like a cumulative update for the one they released, I think, a week or two ago, uh, which is moment five, which uh, mostly bug fixes, but uh, more ink everywhere, which is the notion you can touch anywhere in the, or with your pen, touch anywhere and write anywhere you can type, you can write. You know, is the idea behind this. Um, I control system support at the system level, uh, which they've been talking about actually for a long time. Um, some seven zip bug fixes, frankly, and uh, other fixes. So not a lot of new features, but that one's, you know, it's kind of locked, right? They're, they're getting ready to probably what's the, oh yeah, we should look at the date. So I'm guessing this is my guess. You can see if I'm right or wrong. Next Tuesday <laughs> is week D, right? Yeah. That should be when we get the preview version of moment five on stable. That's my guess. And that it's going to be what we have in the release. I love right that you now. want to predict this, right? Like, cause that they always goes me, so well. They will beat this out of me. I, I it's it, we're getting close, but based on the past, which is no basis for anything <laughs> anymore. Cause that's, you know, again, we're, this is the, uh, what did I call it? The Crayola and coloring book part of Microsoft. <laughs> um, you know, there's no rules. So there you all go. things are okay. possible. Some of them are even likely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's Windows. Um, not too much. I was kind of hoping, honestly, today we'd see some more builds. Uh, it, I guess it could still happen, but if not today, probably tomorrow, you know, we'll see what happens there. Right. And then Xbox, not as momentous as it was the last time, but they have uh, a new set of games for um, Game Pass across all the platforms. Remember last month, there were a couple of really cool looking games. Mm -hmm. Hell Ethno Flurry, a uh, fairy. Hell Ethno Flurry. And we still haven't seen Activision Blizzard at all yet. No, and we we are not seeing it in this list. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'm thinking we're not going to see it this month. That's got to be a standalone it's gotta, it's thing. Got to be a year away, I, I think. Oh, uh, God, it better not be that. Far. It's got to take a while. Um, last two weeks ago, I should say, uh, there were a bunch of games in there I thought were very interesting. I look at this list and I'm like, eh, I don't even recognize most of these. Uh, <laughs> And I'm so I'm kind of back to that, but again, potato. I can't wait to play potato, potato, potato. You're a potato. Persona three is great. Okay, Kevin. Kevin says Persona three. Our producer says Persona. It's a remake of a 2006 game. It looks kind of animated. Like a first person thing, or no? Yeah, but it's got a whole anime storyline to it. By day, killing demons by night. Oh Lord, how. It sounds like, like a CW show with uh, you got a problem with killing. Yeah, you got a problem with killing demons. Come on, I love it that no, the F one game it. does not, in fact, have this year's F one champion wow. and last year's F one champion. And apparently, <laughs> Max Verstappen was so expensive they couldn't buy his image. Oh, okay. I was cover. like, I'm I'm confused that you even know anything about that. Uh, uh, I know it's surprising. I know I'm I'm full of them. Surprise it's disappointing, things. frankly. Um, <laughs> no, I'm an F1 fan. We went to Las Vegas to watch the race. I, I like Remember to watch in things November? Going circles. The, this yeah, like, you like, don't this even get like, to see like, the circle. If you were a baby you to, yeah. and you had that little mobile thing over your head and you never got over it, you're an yeah. F1 fan. It's not even that good. It's, <laughs> it's, they're going so fast and you see, so because it's a street yeah. track, you see so little of the track. It's it, really just, you're just waiting boom, for the crash. That's why. Boom, it's all no. the no, I we even saw kind of a crash, but it wasn't. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> They're so oh. fast. Right. You don't. It's not. Yeah, it's easier to watch races. Those races Much on TV, right? Like, but come, just like person. football, uh, yeah. it's fun to be there. Yeah. I wouldn't do it again, but it was fun for the yeah. Do it once. Yeah, do it. Yeah, once. it's a big commitment. Um, I, <sighs> it's a big financial commitment. That's right. Jeez, oh, yeah. Louise! I bought it a year more than a year ago, or 
<laughs> in the early so bird. Many, so many Patriots games. And finally, one of my friends said, you know, they're not going to win any more games. <laughs> and like, I, you know, what do we like? Why don't we just be <laughs> warm and be inside and have like, yeah, you know, food and drinks? Place. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, inside like human beings, you know. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, but, 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 yeah. Activision Blizzard waiting on that. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, I think. Probably, I think it was the biggest game of last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same yeah. bug? Big bug on Xbox. Uh, same yeah. bug, too. Not not, not, a, not, a, not a fun bug, but um, uh, saves were disappearing. Oh, dear. Uh, there is an Xbox system update that has rolled out that will address that. So it's actually um, an OS-level problem, then, yep. not the game. Interesting. <laughs> I, I know. I, how long did that take to diagnose? A year? <laughs> it took actually a while. They've been complaining about this for a couple of months, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't... The, the problem, let's see, can you recover? If, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If you lost saves, I don't know you can get them yeah, back. Yeah, but they're you, gone. Apparently they're, they're gone. gone. Yeah, I think they're gone. That doesn't surprise me. That's right. Funny. So uh, Ubisoft has made some changes to Ubisoft Plus. And I, I, I just briefly want to take a slight segue here and mention that I saw a headline that said something like, Ubisoft tries to convince people that not owning things is okay. <laughs> and it's like, guys, uh, you didn't really fun. want that game, did you? No, but I mean, like, we've been using subscription services for music, uh, videos. I mean, every you know, uh, office productivity software for years and years. This is yeah, not new. It's not I mean, news. Not, yeah. No, I mean, we just talked about Apple Arcade. You know, sure. um, so it, I, that's a little unfair. But Ubisoft does have something called uh, Ubisoft Plus, which is their kind of tier. So they've kind of um, uh, segmented it out. So now they have something called uh, Ubisoft Plus Classics for PC users only. It's only seven ninety nine a month, but it's kind of all their legacy games everyone knows and loves, like Far Cry Six, Rainbow Six, yeah, Watch Dogs, wrong. all that stuff. Yeah, so that's honestly that's this is kind of a neat little. I think people can. I don't know. There's probably a word for this, but where you kind of swoop in, you're like, I'm just going to pay for this like a month, maybe two, so I can play this game or this handful of games. I'm done, you know. And maybe in a few years I want to do that again. Maybe not, but. Um, I, I think that kind of thing is kind of neat. Um, and then they have the the full-blown service, uh, Ubisoft Plus Premium, which is like $17.99 a month. And that's day one access to all of their games, you know, newest games, obviously. Uh, and I believe, yeah, it's included. Yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to make sure this, is this on Xbox as well? I believe, yeah, it is. Uh, Xbox. And actually on Amazon Luna, <laughs> interestingly. Um, so mm. that's kind of cross-platform but more expensive. I don't, I, Ubisoft plus to me is like the video game version of Paramount plus, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, am the, I that much of a fan of this one thing? Or do I just like games or TV, kinda, right? It's kind of the tertiary ran. Yeah. So, like they, I, no, nobody buys this for themselves. Our grandmother gets it because they didn't understand the words Netflix, <laughs> yeah. right? They're well, I, I, I get pass. why people, I, I get why, no, I don't get why people, I get why these companies do it. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I EA play, you could make a case because they're huge in sports, I guess. Yeah, uh, and, and that's why you buy it. It's for the yeah. sports games. But EA so Play is, I think, is unique in that space. Uh, Ubisoft yeah. Plus, I mean, they they do have some good games. I'm not dumping on them at all, but I mean. No. But I you're, you're talking about leagues here. Like, what do you, where do you bat? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So to me, it's a, would you call it a tertiary service or whatever? Yes. Uh, not a secondary, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right, yeah, that's probably, yeah, that's a good term. Yeah, tertiary <laughs> service. What comes after tertiary? <laughs> quaternary. Quaternary. That's yeah. a tough word. Uh, yeah, quaternary. I don't know what comes after quaternary, though. Quintanary? Yeah. Quintanary. That sounds like a 15-year-old girl's birthday party thing where she wears a wedding dress. Um, <laughs> Feliz quintanarion. <laughs> yeah. Quintanary. All right, let's, uh, let's take a break. And uh, when we come back, back of the book, yes? Yeah. We'll get yeah. you out of here in time. It's really down to uh, you and whiskey, so I think we're okay. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to make sure he has. I, I kind of. I, I, I have like 45 I minutes on whiskey for yep. sure. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you know, if Paul has to leave, you can keep talking. Paul. I'll just yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think yeah. the, the I, record I, I, was the barreling piece, and we're not going to go okay. that long. <laughs> that was 35 okay. I, I feel, minutes. I, I didn't. I, I thought Kevin I, was going to have a coronary. I did feel <laughs> bad last week. I think it was last week. Uh, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Before we go on, though, you're uh, back of the book coming up in just yes. a bit. I do want to give a little plug for us. Go, yay, team. Uh, if you like the programming you're listening to right now, if you want more of that, if you want to, uh, if you want to keep up with that, what's happening in AI, what's happening with Microsoft, Apple, uh, Google, the Internet, security, uh, you're a candidate for a Club Twit because... 
Twitter is all about keeping you up to date on what's happening in the world of technology so that you can be an informed user. Uh, you can create something new. You can protect yourself. Uh, and I think uh, this is going to be a big year. This is going to be a very interesting year. So I want to invite you to join Club Twit. Uh, what do you get? Well, besides the warm and fuzzy feeling that you're helping us out <laughs> at Twit, you also get all of our shows ad-free. You get members-only shows like Paul's Hands on Windows, Mac is covered with uh, Michael Sargent's Hands on Mac. There's Home Theater Geeks. iOS Today is now in the club only. The Untitled Linux Show. You also get a bonus feed that includes outtakes, behind-the-scenes content. You get access to our Discord, which is a great hang even when the shows aren't on. And you can watch a live feed of the shows being produced. All of that for 7 bucks a month. But again, the main reason... I mean, we wanted to give you some some real benefits, but the main reason to do it is because you like what you hear and you want to support it. There are monthly plans, there are yearly plans, there are family plans and corporate plans. Uh, and I, you know, you can occasionally I hear from people saying, "Well, seven is not enough. I want. Why don't you charge more? We don't want to charge more, but if you want to give more, you can. In the process, you'll see you can increase that to ten bucks a month if you feel like it or more." Uh, but really, all we ask is 7 bucks a month. And if we can get, I, it is our goal by the end of the quarter to get to about 5% of our audience participating. That's not an outrageous amount. Uh, public radio, uh, public broadcasting is more like 10%. Uh, I think we're worth it, don't you? So, please, twit.tv slash club twit. Also, I should mention while you're there, uh, the survey is ongoing through the end of the month. Last chance to take it uh, in the next couple of weeks twit.tv slash survey24 just takes a minute or two uh, but that helps us understand our audience better and we want to make sure every show gets represented so Windows Weekly listeners make sure you take the Twit audience survey at twit.tv slash survey24 all right I'm not gonna no more begging let's let's continue on with the back of the book Paul Therata and his tip of the week Paul I would pay for like a half-life service so what mm. We have, uh, I'll tell you what we have. We have a mine, we have two different Minecraft servers right. that Club Twit members get to play on. One was uh, originally built years ago by OMG uh, yeah, Chad. OMG and, Chad. Yeah, with a bunch of uh, listeners and users. And it really is a replication of That's Twit. Fun. The whole studio's there and everything. It's really cool. And then we have Crazy. a really hard survival server. But people are good at Minecraft. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. You know, anyway, what's your transitioning tip? to only yes. playing old games? That's I think old thing. games are the best. Yeah, I'm just going to you know, read Call books of Duty. And uh, Call of Duty is an old game. It sure is. Been around a long time. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we talked up front about some of this crazy insurtification stuff, and a couple of years ago, maybe 18 months ago, I kind of freaked out when I was seeing all these pop-up ads and mobile nonsense, like for services I was paying for, and I, I, I finally said, I, I can't do this anymore. And I started using something called NextDNS on my mobile devices only, not on my um, PCs. And it's worked well enough that I actually convinced my wife to use it. And as you two have both, I think, mentioned on this very show, you run into these issues with this type of solution um, where they come down and they're like, uh, I click on this thing and it breaks uh, and fix it. <laughs> you know, so there is a little bit of maintenance to this. Um, and if you want to block like the tracking that occurs through, whether it's the new outlook or, um, you know, on the web, whatever, um, these types of solutions, whether it's next DNS or something else are, pile. you know, are, are one way a pile. Yes. Uh, one way to do this. So the thing you need to understand is that you're going to have problems and that you need to be technical enough to kind of try to solve them. So you, you got to learn the tool. <laughs> Yeah. The the thing I'm experimenting right now is because I say I pay for Microsoft 365. So when I run the new Outlook, I don't see anything. Right. Um, uh, but I, I'm going to, I have other accounts. So I, I'm, I've set up uh, next DNS on three computers now, uh, two of which are not my Microsoft account, uh, just to kind of test that and see what that experience is like. And what do I have to kind of work around? I've noticed things on my phone. I mean, there's certain things like um, I think it's the Google discovery feed, uh, certain links, because they go through like a third, uh, well, a Google service. You don't, you're not clicking on a URL. You're clicking on a URL that transfers to another URL. You actually never get to the story because, right. you know, that's one thing that next DNS is preventing. Right. Um, so you got to kind of figure that out. It's a little bit difficult. So like I said up front, this is not a solvable problem per se. 
Unless you don't care about the rest of the world at all, <laughs> in which case then you're all set. I guess. You know, if you don't go on the internet, they can't serve right. you ads. The most uh, secure computer in the world is not connected mm -hmm. to the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. So that's that. I, 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 I guess what I, the tip, such as it is, is that if you're bothered by this behavior you're seeing and the new outlook in particular, uh, I think it would behoove everybody to do a little bit of research and and kind of experiment on these types of solutions, Nextiness or Pi-hole being two, two of the big ones. Um, I think I pay for Nextiness, if I'm not mistaken, but it's, it's not It's cheap. It's cheap. You can use it. I think you get 300,000 queries a month, but if that's yeah, not it's enough, like, you I know, never, I mean, I, yeah, it, It's it, really, really cheap. Yeah, it's Nextiness.io, and it's, yeah. uh, I, you know what, you can... The way I solve this is I, uh, you can put it on individual machines. You can block the whole household. Right. Um, you can put it on your router. Right. So initially I had it on the router. It, it's not I, software. See, I'm, it's I'm, just, you just I'm doing redirect your up. DNS. Yeah. But, right. but you can put it, you can have individual machines use it. So I use it all the time. I don't the want. The reason I put it on mobile devices and it's first great for mobile. and then kept yeah. them there is because of, you run apps. You have right? to. Yeah. When you're on a PC or probably a Mac, a lot of what you do is happening through a web browser and yeah, we have anti-tracking, yeah. ad blocking in the, in those products, yeah, yeah. right? So because I didn't want to break everything everywhere, I didn't ever put, well, also I had a Google uh, Wi-Fi system that didn't support it, but now I have an Aero one that does. So I could, I could do that, but I, I need to figure it out first and maybe I won't even take that step. We'll see. But um, anyway, I'm, a, I'm experimenting and I, I recommend that you do as well. Yeah. Um, the app where, where the pie hole kitty came big was for the TV because the TV has a built-in Roku, but the, also the, the TV sends a ton of tele telemetry that's right. about yep, what you're TVs. watching. Oh, they're the worst. Yeah. And generally speaking, I just don't plug them in. But in this case, you need to or the TV doesn't work. I, mean, doesn't I have do a, what you wanted to do. Uh, a Roku TV in Mexico. I, say, I, God, I yeah. hate it so much. I, I put an Apple TV on it so I can just kind of bypass it when it comes on. But it's still, I, I just, yeah, the worst. Roku, no, I hate and, the Roku. And this is where I'm saying, like, we can we can fix this for you with a pie hole and set it yeah. up in there. You got to do a little you, bit. Of, yeah. But you do have to do some care and feeding. There's no two ways around it. Like it's, That's, that's right. Nothing yep. else you can do. That's right. Oh, yeah, I, I, this is not something I could hand off to a main, like my wife and say, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, you won't be fine. No. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a little more complicated. Well, you'd have to teach it. Like it's solvable. It's just, first is the instinct to diagnose. What's going yeah. on here? Why is this I, working? Is the internet down? Like there's lots of right. yeah, possibilities. Right. That's exactly right. Right. You got to go, oh, wait, it's being, it, it's being interpreted as a ad or a tracker. And so it's being eliminated. Yeah. Anyhow. We'll get there. No, I, well, maybe we're, we're all, on. I we're think it's, it's going to gonna be a, yeah, it's going to be, it's the forever war really. But yeah. Uh, but Welcome hopefully you get into a race. place. Yeah. You get into a place where you kind of understand what the problem is and can you know how to solve it at least. Um, and then the app pick is, it's what I've, I picked this several times, but I, I've been using brave full time as my browser, mobile and desktop for not quite two years, but close to that. And uh, I still recommend it for people who care about privacy and security. There's literally no better choice. Um, there is one little Achilles heel with the browser though, and it's not Brendan Ike. It's that, uh, um, well, <laughs> you can argue that one, but, uh, they don't use the, the, the password, the, um, they don't do autofill on mobile. And this what? has been a known pro. Yes. That's I, weird. I, I know. And by the way, the only reason I ever went to a standalone password manager, and I do use Bitwarden is because of this, right? Because otherwise I just use Brave. Brave. I trust it. Like it's, it's, uh. It's such a great browser, but they, I can't, I, I don't want like two copies of my password, you know, database out in the world. Like I, so I, that I have to then maintain, right. Or keep up, you know, sync somehow. Like I, so they've been actively working on this for at least three years. People complain about it all the time. It's the one thing they've been kind of tone deaf on. Like I, they, I saw one really idgety response from someone who worked at Brave who was just getting mad about all the questions about it. It's like, we're working on it. Shut up. You know, it's like, <laughs> okay, but it's been years. Um, and then because we talked about Bitwarden and pass keys and password managers last week, hmm. the weird, I, I finally published my article, right? It, the non-controversial, not me advising you should do this, but just kind of explaining the problem and what I discovered. And by the way, Richard, I never told you this. I'm so sorry. You were a hundred percent right that the security goons who work for Bitwarden have no idea how to make UI. And what I eventually discovered is that two to three weeks of me banging my head repeatedly trying to get this thing to work the same way on multiple computers was not me. It's because sometimes this thing just doesn't work. Like what, what, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding. 
And so it's inter- not just that it's badly described. It's that it's it's badly. Got, you're you're done. talking pass keys on Bitwarden. No, I'm talking uh, pa- uh, this one. I'm talking. I'm sorry. The, uh, we one of the things we talked about last week was this notion. Of, what I want to do is make this as seamless as possible. Bitwarden pass just we- added this uh, passwordless login. Yeah, I'm going to get to that one. It's not passkey. That okay. uh, this is. I'm just. This is. Just, that's you're saying kind of Bitwarden add-on. doesn't work on some of your systems. It doesn't work consistently on any of my systems. So here's oh, the problem. you have some weird thing going on. No, no, I don't. it works no, great I, on No, I don't. Systems. I've used this with multiple user accounts, multiple... No, no, let me explain what it is, and then you'll. I think you'll understand. Um, what I want is sign in with Windows Hello Biometrics, right? We to do that, you this. have to install Nobody's and configure the that. desktop app. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm just, let me just explain it. And uh, otherwise, yeah, I don't want to type a master password. So I get that I can't have pass keys yet, but I want to use Windows Hello. That's the next best thing. It's still no... Pa- it's still passwordless. What happens is you go to the extension and you say, turn it on. It says you have to turn it on first in the desktop app. And you're like, I did. So you go to the desktop app and you turn it off, turn it on, click save, go over here. And then it says waiting for the response from the desktop app never comes. And then you go, turn it on, turn it off. The th- so every PC is a little differently. I, I literally have one P- PC that I've never gotten it to work on. But what I found for the most part is if you keep trying, let it fail, let it fail, let it fail. Eventually, you'll get through. I spent two and a half weeks to three weeks trying to figure this out. It's not me. It's Bitwarden. This is terribly written. So that's where I'm at, and that's why I'm insane. But anyway, the day I published this, <laughs> the day I published this, I finally I stressed over this for three weeks, sat down in front of the TV, looked at my phone, and it said, Bitwarden adds passkey support. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> and so, and so they've, so always, they've had passkey support for a long time. They added no, no, it for your pass, their master sorry, password. There are two sides to passkeys. You can right. save passkey. What I'm talking about is use a passkey to sign into Bitwarden, right? Right. Uh, single sign on right. or passwordless sign on. Right. So then I looked at the story and actually they, they only added it to the web client. <laughs> so it doesn't help you on a computer or a device. Although on a device, as everyone knows, it works much better. That works. With, th- that biometric thing is completely usable. Works great on mobile. Um, so it wasn't what I asked for, it, but it was the weirdest coincidence. I finally, I'm like, I'm going to put this behind me. Yeah. I'm going to put this out in the world. I feel good about it. Bitwarden that's I, I, I saw I it. Like, I knew. You, I, are you kidding me? I, I, this you know? was literally after your tirade on Wednesday. Yes. They came yeah. out with it. It was yes. so funny. But it's not. It, it, it isn't what I was looking for. It's only on the web client. So it doesn't uh, do but, it uh, in your browser. No, there is no way to sign in to Bitwarden in the browser or the desktop client with Pascals mm-hmm. right now. But it's coming. They, they, it is coming. This is the first step. They did it in the web client. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it doesn't come up for me because I use biometrics because yeah. I'm not using Windows. Um, yeah, and and by the way, I meant to say you were making you were talking about you looked at it on the Mac, and and the one thing I'd kind of forgotten about that it may be tied to this. We were talking about four digit versus six digit pins and blah blah blah, whatever. You were saying like the the one thing about the Mac that's very different from Windows that I think people need to understand is that. The Mac uses the system for sign-in that we had in Windows 7 and older, where you always sign in with a local account that you created specific to that device and hopefully added a password that was hopefully specific to that device. Um, In Windows 7, they added the ability to connect a Microsoft account, which was then called a passkey account, to that local account, right? So you could get the benefit of the uh, authentication pass-through capabilities, like in a browser or whatever. Um, But in Windows today, most individuals, almost all of them, uh, and many business users, or most business users too, actually sign in with an online account, right? It's not a local account. Right. Uh, and so it, I wonder sometimes, and because Apple uses the same system on their other devices, if there isn't something about that that makes, because if you if you signed into a local account in Windows, added a password, <laughs> uh, and then protected it with Windows Hello, that actually works fine. It's just the, there's something about the online account that screws up this whole system. Um, and that's true of things like uh, accessing a network share on a different computer in your home network, uh, using remote desktop. There, there's something about those online accounts, Microsoft accounts and Microsoft work and school accounts. I promise, Richard, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, blo- I'm sorry, Richard. I'll just shut up. Let's move on. You'll I'm be so fine. Sorry. Everything's fine. I just said, Richard, I'm not going to take up all the time. And then I kept talking. I'm so sorry. It's going to be fine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, run as radio. Uh, this week's run as radio 
April Dunham back for her third visit. Uh, originally an independent, now she is a blue badge. She's a cloud yeah. advocate on the power platform, which is what she's always talked about. So we spent uh, over 30 minutes just talking about all the co-pilots in the power platform space now. Uh, we went over three of them. There's a one for power apps. There's one for power BI. There's one for power automate. Uh, so, I mean, uh, apps is this, you know, uh, heterogeneous client builder tool. And this idea that you could actually add, you can use Copilot to build the app and you can add Copilot to the app. So rather than trying to build interfaces for everything, just let them chat to it and, uh, and then render what they're asking for. And Power BI, of course, is on the, on the analytics side. So there's lots to describe there rather than try and slice and dice your way through a lot of things. And the Power Automate one, this is the one where you can build automations inside of your normal workflows. So adding a Copilot, it's got more of a GitHub Copilot feel to it, that it's helping you write the automation, which is pretty compelling. Uh, yeah, can't get away from it. It's everywhere, but uh, it's interesting to see them expanding in that space. I always wondered how many of these copilots are actually going to see the light of day, but uh, and it turns out it's going to be more than you think. There's three more, and that's what we did on Run As. Wow! All right, there it is in all its glory. Run As Radio. Now, how about some whiskey? <laughs> uh, did we we did a bunch of uh, Scottish the past few weeks, and I had to do a, a, a Canadian last week just to be a variation. So let's go a little Irish today for fun. And I picked an odd one, one that's called known as Writer's Tears. Now, then this is a reference to this idea. I, mean, I always think <laughs> of James Joyce in this scenario. Yeah, yeah, he's a, <laughs> this famously slow <laughs> writer, like it it's took so him eight painful. years to write Ulysses. <sighs> Admittedly, 250, uh, 260,000 words, like 900 yeah. pages. So, uh, and that, that when frustrated from writer's block or whatever it may be, you've got all these famous Irish writers like Sam Beckett, Ye Yates, <laughs> Oscar Wilde, so what they'd all drink whiskey to the point where that their tears were actually whiskey flavored. I mean, it's ridiculous. Aww. There are cocktails called writer's block too. There, there's a bunch of yeah. different ones. There's one that's like half Amarato, half bourbon with some lemon juice and bitters. <laughs> uh, there was one with pineapple juice. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh, what's interesting about Writer's <laughs> Tears is that it is a new whiskey from a new distiller. So this is Bernard and Rosemary Walsh, who formed a company called Walsh Distillery. Now, and they only formed that back in 99. Uh, Bernard Walsh has a long history in whiskey uh, in Ireland, and it was well known. But they actually started out making an Irish coffee liqueur called The Hot Irishman. Uh, <laughs> and they, this is before they had really had a distillery, per se. They were... We were basically ordering it from other distilleries and bottling it. Uh, they did then get into uh, doing that with regular whiskey. Their first whiskey was called the Irishman as opposed to the hot Irishman. And in 2009, they made Rider's Tears. Now, at this point, they did not have a distillery. They are what is known as a non-distilling producer or an NDP. And uh, which is to say that they, they go to various sources to do this. Uh, now, this is not that different from what we talked about last week with Bareface, because Bareface, those guys ordered a seven year old bourbon made with 100 percent corn right from another provider. And then they did some additional aging. They did some time in wine cask and then some time in the virgin Hungarian oak. And then they ship it over to a bottler. The wall shut up. They don't even do that much. They're literally, they're taking it from two different distilleries, having it delivered to a third place where it's barreled and aged and then bottled and shipped out. I don't know that they touch it at all. Hmm. Interestingly, adjacent to this, they did start building a distillery in about 2013 uh, and by, it was operational by 2016. <laughs> but to finance it, the 50% owner was uh, Ilva Sarono. Those are the guys who make Tia Maria and Desarono. And within a year or two of operations, they were fighting tooth and nail. By 2019, they went separate ways, which is to say uh, Sarono got the distillery. They renamed it the Royal Oak Distillery. It makes a line of whiskeys you've never heard of called the Buskers, which are sold only internationally. Actually, they're not really sold in Ireland. Uh, and is the funny part is when you read the website, like if you don't get all these bits and pieces, you're, it seems like they make whiskey when really what they're doing is they're contracting out. That being said, last year they broke ground on another distillery with the intent to make writer's tears themselves because it has been their hit. 
Uh, and so they, they've made a lot of variations on it using a bunch of distant distilleries and they want to change it again, which is going to mean that you'll never know what kind of versions of Writer's Tears you're actually going to get. The original Writer's Tears, the one from 2009, is what's known as a vatted whiskey. And we talked about these terms before, but that is to say it is a combination of different styles of whiskey. It's not a blend because a blend always has grain alcohol in it, typically made with corn to lower its cost. You just add alcohol that way. This vatted whiskey, where it tears, is 100% barley, which is not all that common. The Irish like playing with their mash bills. They like little corn, a little rye, a little wheat. They go kind of nuts, but this is pure barley. In Rider's Tears specifically, they use a 40% triple distilled single malt, likely from the Cooley distillery. They keep it a secret. Um, then they also have 60% a triple distilled pot still uh, whiskey from Middleton, which is where they do a lot of their production work. Now, this is the same recipe as the Irishman, but the Irishman was 30% pot and 70% malt. And they come out to about the same price. They do, of course, refer to it as a super premium whiskey. Uh, to be clear, this is a vatted whiskey. That's not a bad thing, but it's worth about 20 bucks a bottle and they sell it for 40 because they do spend a lot on marketing and sort of positional things. And if you drink it, it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's all right. It's nothing. It's okay. It's okay. But if you're going to spend $40 on a 40% whiskey, uh, spend forty five dollars and buy a Red Breast twelve. Yeah, exactly. Because I like Red Breast. It's should, just, uh, just uh, yeah, a great whiskey. I bought some for a yeah. friend over yeah. Christmas. Actually, yeah. if you want to, if you just want to, you can get a middling whiskey like this in a twenty dollar range. Easy enough. Get a bottle of Jameson. And again, I'm not going to just say anything bad about Jameson. Get the Black Bush. Good whiskey and cheap, nice. inexpensive, very drinkable all day long. <laughs> this is in a funny spot. It's got you know it's got going for it. A good name and some good photos. I, the uh, thing that bugs me, I'm positive I've heard of this. I'm positive I've had it. Yeah. Writer's Tears. Absolutely. Right. I've, I've, dude, I've, I've had bottles of it. No, no question <laughs> about it. It's not a name it. you'd forget very quickly. Right. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, it seemed like it was custom made. Especially yeah, as a no. writer. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it goes here, right? It's got that name. It's got a name. It's got a style. It's got a finesse to it. But I swear to God, $12 of that bottle is marketing. At least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Well, uh, you know, I am here visiting my mom, and she yesterday said, "Bring me bourbon." And uh, which way I went did you to, go? Well, she, she wanted Jim Beam, oh, uh, and she says, "Get me the one with a handle." So <laughs> I, yikes. I would like a jug of bourbon, <laughs> the one point one five. Did she right? play a so, song on it after? So yeah. I went. I went to the to bottles, which is the liquor store over here, and. Uh, and they have oh they have all the you, um the you whiskey have a Yankee Spirits in your area those are fantastic stores in that area the bottles was great months. they had all the yeah. whiskeys that Richards I mean there was Angels okay. Envy there was all kinds of great stuff yeah. but the, and I, I couldn't find the Jim Beam and I said where's the Jim Beam and she said oh it's over here I said would you have one with a handle she said. This is the East Side. We don't have Jim Beam nice. handles. I, lo I, lo I love it. I love that it got that local. This is in Massachusetts, I'm you jerk. Sorry, jerk. You, uh, you might want to go to Massachusetts, that is my amazing. friend. You got to cross the waterway to find a jug. That's hilarious. probably just as well. I don't think my mom should really be having yeah, a handle. But we have wild either. turkey by the gallon. Yeah, I that's bet they. Really, well, that's, maybe that's I really. Funny. So Beam's that's okay. So great. I wanted right. to get her something better. Okay. I wanted get to get some Angels Envy. Or, um, or, um, hey, Crown Mark. Royal would be. Yeah, Maker's get her Mark. Mark. Yeah. Not Crown Royal. Uh, get her Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. They had a yep. big bottle Perfect. of that. They had a yep. bottle of Knob Creek. They had some good stuff. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, Creek. listen, Beam's your classic well she whiskey. Wanted beam. It's fine. Yeah. Now, nobody nobody got, nobody got, died for drinking Beam. Well, She's actually, 99 well, years old. She wants Jim Beam. She's getting Jim Beam. But, you know, you... Get a, Mark's a nice bottle. Like it's a lovely drink. I should, okay, I'll tell her, I'll tell you what. I don't want to get her. Well, I don't want to encourage it to be honest mm, with you. But right. she, you know. So the trick is to give her a taste of more expensive whiskey, so she has to buy less. Yeah. She. I no. think you know. I'm sure the doctors would say, "What are you crazy? Don't bring her whiskey." Right. But I think if you get to a certain age, you should have whatever the hell you want. Of your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. What yeah. are you trying to prove? Right. right. You know, she likes ninety one. Old is she? Likes, is she yeah, she won. Go. It's done. Yeah, she's, she's already done. won. She the won. game's over. Yeah, yeah, it's in the ring. And uh, you know what? And she likes drink. her. She likes her C's candy. Mm -hmm. So uh, nice. I always bring her. I 
bring her a box of seeds yep. when I come out. And I'm sure the doctor would say, well, don't let her eat the whole box. I, I said, Mom, if you want to eat the whole box. She's my mother, not my the, child. I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah, eat the whole damn thing. Yep. What's it going right. to do, kill you? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, everything's going to. Have some fun while you're doing it. You know what? Yeah. She's she. It's so fun to see her. It's kind of fun yeah, to come it's out. Great. Of here. That's I awesome. Brought, you're there again, brother. Yeah, That's I great. brought. I love, well, love. She's those, declining. So uh, you, you love the shutters. Plantation blends. Yeah, the shutters. shutters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my uh, plantation shutters. Huh? Always very jealous. A lot of mom stuff behind me here. A lot of sure. antiques. Yeah. I'm in New nice. England, so it's got a bunch of oil lamps. Oh, yeah. No, it looks like the inside of a Cracker Barrel restaurant. There, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Paul Therat is at therat.com. That's his website. If you're not a premium member yet, you're missing some of the best content ever. I mean, it's all great, but boy, he's got some good stuff under the premium label there. <laughs> so, so join. And of course, his books are at leanpub.com, including Windows Everywhere, which is kind of a history of Windows through its programming languages and the field guide for Windows 11. Also there, uh, and of course Paul's here every Wednesday. And apologies again to Richard. I, I God, I have, I can't stop talking. I have a problem. <laughs> you're a podcast host. You're the, one with, so, you're the one with the time uh, limit, man. I would have just stayed so in. Sorry, I think we made it. <laughs> I know. You I meant four to, minutes. Meant you can to, get out of here in four. Well, no, minutes. we're sliding in hot for sure. Yeah, sliding, sliding in hot. hot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Campbell. He is at runisradio.com. That's where Run His Radio his podcast is, as well as .net rocks. Mm -hmm. Every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, we do Windows Weekly. You can watch us do it live on YouTube.com slash Twit. We go live when the show goes live. Uh, of course, club members get to watch before and after as well. If you're not a club member, please join Twit.tv slash Club Twit. After the fact, on-demand versions of the show here at the website, Twit.tv slash WW. There's also a YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly. You can subscribe in your favorite podcast player. Uh, we invite you to do that. That way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available. Paul, Richard, have a wonderful week. Thank you. Stay warm. Trip. I know there's a lot of snow both uh, in both places. Yep. I'm going to do another pass here. with the blower, I think. What's the oh. snow situation where you are? It it, be... uh, you know, we said we had almost a foot uh, on yeah, uh, oh, uh, Tuesday night. Or no, I guess it was Gross. Monday night. And then it and then it sleeted like yesterday, and it got wet, and then it froze. All that good New England. Oh, yeah. crap. Welcome to New England. It's yeah. crunchy. Uh, I learned a trick though, and you probably already know this. I'm walking around, and I see everybody's windshield wipers sticking straight up. Yeah. Right. My sister said, "Yeah, so they don't freeze to the windshield." The yeah, you 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 pull them off, and it's like still little bits of rubber on the glass. You're like you're great. Yeah. So I uh, used my scraper, scraped mm -hmm. it off. Turned the car on, let the heat warm up, and uh, it worked. Nice. So it's going to snow again, I think, on enough Friday. But it's yeah, pretty great. chill. It's, it's January. Like, it's yeah. cold. It's cold. Yep. It's yeah. Well, it, they, there hasn't been a lot of snow in this area. New York's first uh, snowfall in two years. Right. Yeah, but the, yeah. the year we had six feet of snow on the ground, it didn't snow until uh, January 29th, I think. It was, yeah. So, you know, you can get fooled, and then it, come, well, you I'm know, going it home comes well. in late. Yeah. Going home yep. Saturday night. Going to watch the football game on uh, JetBlue and uh, nice. be home, be home mm -hmm. for the shows on Sunday. Thank you uh, for uh, being here, guys. We'll see you next week. All you winners and dozers on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey there, I'm Micah Sargent. Look, as a geek myself, I feel it's only fair if I admit something. We can be kind of hard to shop for. So what do you get for that geek in your life who has everything already? Well, a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes and special content, and I love this, exclusive shows like my own Hands on Mac and Hands on Windows from Paul Therott, as well as the Untitled Linux Show. So purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubtwit, and they will thank you every day.